What's going on? Hello, internet. It's us. Your favorite. <laughs> it's the internet's favorite average of five viewers D&D stream. <laughs> <laughs> Known as... Three of them are us. Runeterra Adventures. That's right, sometimes. <laughs> Um, although this has been nice where I didn't even watch the own stream for the extra viewers, so I could I should count that as an average of 5.3, probably. I'm Dubs, I'm the host, and the internet's favorite kind of buff DM. Uh, sleeves are bullshit. <laughs> 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 he actually did it. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> to my left is, of course, Lil Wayne playing LaRue. Above me, my bestest friend Chewy playing Captain Ezra Black. To my top right... Mr. Marcus Warfield playing Galio, not to be confused with Galio, and of course my own father, the Blue Lion Sage, playing uh, the ever illustrious artificer Amy Proto, the Warforged. There's a couple people missing tonight, and that's fine. We're just gonna roll on without it. I wrote a one shot in about 12 and a half seconds. We'll just kind of see how it goes. It could be a lot of fun. Thank you for everybody for tuning in. Before we start, we still have announcements. Half of our announcements have disappeared with two fifths, six. This, eight, seven, eight, whatever of our players but I will let we can do our announcement so dad who the who the audience at home can't see please tell us about your YouTube series that you're creating here with the Blue Lion Sage yeah sure uh, apologize for not being there in face but I'm having internet connection issues I had to go to voice only for today uh, I have uh a channel at the Blue Lion Sage, and basically right now it's mainly D and D stuff. But been a game master for over forty years. Been playing the game since like a couple years after it was invented, and I just try to I'm gonna try to add some history to things and also just share my experience on game mastering and playing issues. Awesome, thank you, Mr. Blue Lion Sage. You can also find him featured in several of my one-shots and playing several characters in and out of campaigns around here on Twitch. More, not more importantly, but super exciting, very exciting other news from another Wanio clan member. Please, Danielle, do you have any information to share with the party and people at home? Yeah, so, uh, hello, I'm Wayne. Hello. Um, I actually wanted to kind of celebrate our like year together you guys i know it's kind of a bummer that not everyone's here but i drew a little party portrait and so if if uh that uploads onto the uh discord everyone feel free to take a look i like tiny tim <laughs> <laughs> i no, i didn't know you put them on on the oh that's so cool wayne there's tiny that's tim fire. So I want to kind of point out, so for Galio, I wanted to give you like a badass sword, some badass armor, um, just make you kind of, you know, large and in charge. Amy, of course, I had to include your arcane cannon with little toy soldier boy, um, made you like a Napoleonic baddie, and uh, the blue stripes from Orn, that god there, Ezra, uh, gave you a bottle because I'll drink to that. <laughs> can't go wrong, can't go wrong. Um, thought you're kind of a chill dude, so you might wear your party emblem on your belt rather than, like, on Ooh. your shirt. Um, like for it. Gust, I included his mask and his hood that I know he likes to wear. Uh, for Sylvan, gave him his new pet bird. Gave him also the, uh, gorilla strength earring and a sick staff and, like, some bark skin. Um, and... Oh, I'm actually realizing that I sent the wrong version. That's awkward. You sent I the like wrong this... version. Yeah, I like this one a lot better. This Sorry, one's that one really cool. The... <laughs> what are you talking I didn't about? I do the shading on uh, Ezra's bottle. And, like shadows on the ground. Hey, look at that guy. Whoa. I know that guy. Is that... He's kind of what? Buff. You're fucking kidding, Wayne. Ah! That's so fucking cool. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're joking! It's Liddy McTitty. No, you didn't! I will didn't. drink to that. When you, that. When you so did it! Here. You did what? not! What, <laughs> what did you do? Dude! Look in the DM dubs! Look in the DM dubs! Hang on! <laughs> no, <laughs> you didn't! Oh, she did. I'm oh, gonna fire. fucking cry! Um, Danny, put it, put it on the, put it on the Twitch. I'm going. I'm working. I'm working as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm the Twitch Danny, oh my god! 
that, dude, Wayne, that means so much to me. That's so fucking that. cool. You're kidding. That's fire. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> For anybody watching at home, hang on. It's it's coming, but wow. I'm gonna fucking cry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would I would have legitimately paid so much money for someone else to have created that and Wayne is just doing this out of the goodness of her heart and or slash boredom. I just think that's so rad. This week. <laughs> I like the boots so. on Sylvan. It looks sick. Just looking at the boots. Those are sick. They're like stuffed with feathers. I was just really excited because look at the fucking shirt Arrow's wearing today. <laughs> <laughs> it has the <laughs> This is awesome. Oh my god. Petite LaRue. Petite LaRue's there. Amy's got her little cannon with a little toy Oh, Justin, with a you weren't here, but I've got your, you know, your gorilla grip earring and like you have a bark arm. What? I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Yep. But, um. Oh, wait, that's. I didn't even notice the arm was bark. I thought it was just that sick. Because you're a manzanita tree. Danny, this is so dope. Dude, I thought that I knew the secret. Like, I thought I had already seen the finished product, and this is so far. <laughs> Wayne fucking duped me too, dudes. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was duping. I'm a dupey now, dude. <laughs> dupey. Oh, man. Sorry I'm late. I, I was in the middle of a massive plant undertaking, and there were some <laughs> setbacks. Dude, we were worried about you. Oh, it's all good. I just planted a bunch of chili peppers, so... Hey. We love chili peppers around here. We do. Anyway, that was my announcement. Sorry to derail the stream. That's fire. I, um... Arrow, I'll go ahead and send you a solo of you in case you You're want that. You're kidding. Um, I'm going to make that my anybody, Twitch icon. If anybody wants a solo, uh, everyone was drawn on separate layers. So if you want your specific image, I can take people out. I can, if you've got a crush on Amy and you want to be next to her alone, I can do that for you. I like, love that. Yeah. Can you draw me so just with Amy? Um, Amy's dummy thick. You yeah. know I could do that in the span <laughs> of like 30 seconds, right? <laughs> no, if you okay, want to... 30. If you could send like just Sylvan to me, that would be dope. Oh, yeah. I actually already exported those, so those I can send. Do you want uh, with or without the background? Uh, with the background. Um, actually, Please. did I do everybody except Sylvan? <laughs> Oops. Okay. Sorry, I exported <laughs> All you. Alright. <laughs> I see how it is. No, I only have you without the background. <laughs> um, if you guys look in Discord, you'll see. <gasps> wow, that's so cool. But, um... But yeah. <laughs> the end. Wait. You're I'm fucking now. kidding with how cool this is, dude. So cool. I think we need to That's spend me. another five minutes talking about how impressive this is. For I'm a little bit Wayne's I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Stuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly I already put it on on Instagram. <laughs> our, our, at little Wayne and then all caps drew the coolest picture I've ever seen for our D and D campaign. I'm embarrassed. Mm, okay. Well, anyway, let's do the show. <laughs> All right. I just saw your text. I'm a live arrow. Okay, thank goodness. We were worried about you. I typed in the chat I was going to be a little late, but mm. maybe it oh, thought... You know how we are about that. reading chat. Oh, yeah. It's up at the very top before yeah. you started the music at all. Yeah, you know how we Whoop. are about that. Anyways. All right. Um, very cool. When I have, when I, have I hope moment. our two viewers... Well, I'm one of them. I hope our one viewer enjoyed that. Well, actually, it's funny because I get zero viewers, but I get like 33 to 40 views on my VODs after the fact. Ooh. Yeah. Huh. Which is like... Like, Isaac actually hit me up. He was like, dude, did you realize you have like 40 views on your last D&D session? I was like, yeah, it's really weird. I don't know who's watching these. <laughs> so I get way more views after the fact than I typically do while we're live, which is why I treat it like it's like an episode of something because when somebody does come, come watch... Uh, later on, they get to be like, oh, holy cow, how impressive are these guys, you know? It's my 39 burner accounts. So I just want to support you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it, dude. Um, I'm also going to pull up my own stream just to pull up views here. Anyways. Oh, I can hear myself. I'm going to turn that down. 
All right. We are, in fact, on the high seas. I'm going to draw back up our boat as we are officially leaving the Freljord. I got all caught up in the hype. I forgot how to click buttons here. Yes, this should be a familiar sight to everybody. LaRue. Gust. We'll say Gust is doing his typical lookouty, whatever stuff he does. Sylvan, my friend with a new bow. Who is that? Who's this? Huh? Oh, it's Haleth. Okay. Oh, Haleth. Haleth is hanging <laughs> out with his dad. Amy Proto is very likely below decks getting work done. Uh, you were talking about Justin's girlfriend coming into frame. And then I also thought so. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Haleth. Oh, right. Uh -huh. No, I'm very much just looking at, um... <laughs> Danny, what the girlfriend Taylor? Danny, what the fuck is your Twitter handle? I can never remember. Young Wayne. Young Wayne. Yeah. There it is. Lil Wayne was oddly taken. I don't know. Yeah, I kept searching for Lil Wayne. I was like, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get unemotional about how fucking cool that picture was. I'm gonna get back to reality here. We are on the high seas, <laughs> Amy. To start off this adventure, something very important. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, in fact, all I can do is hear. I'm, I can't watch any streams or anything, so Found I'm about. theater. All right. You are made aware just as we start leaving the Freljord on our way down to Piltover and Zom that you receive some postage from your uh, companion slash helper slash hired help slash slave rescuee. William? That's William. You received some postage, and we did touch on this just a bit last game, but this a letter has come specifically for you requesting your immediate return to Piltover as there is a family crisis which needs your attention. E gads. Uh, who Who's it from? Parents, brother, sister, some lab worker? Your parents themselves. Whose names I actually right. forgot. Could you um could you remind me? Yeah, give me a quick second. The last name is Babbage, that part I remember. <clears throat> yep. And it's Hal and Irma. Hal and Irma Babbage. Yeah, I need to remember um I need to get with you a little bit later as we start doing stuff in Piltover's on, so I can try and portray them accurately as we're uh as we're getting into that that bit. Uh, yes, it is in fact signed from, from your father creator, Hal Babbage, requesting your immediate return as House Remington is in desperate need of help. Not only this, but as more and more gun stores are closing down, not closing down, but basically um, taking protective measures, like not, not like out of business, but closing up shop for self-preservation. It appears that uh, banditry and general crime have been sincerely on the rise and are looking to get out of control down there in Piltover and Zon. All right. All right. Gather my compatriots. First, they notice that I've developed a new set of blue glowing pin striping from my new attachment to uh, Orn the Maker. And I say... Uh, I, a letter caught up to me. It appears I have family issues and, and company issues out in Piltover. Uh, unless anybody has a, an issue or a place they'd want to be, I ask that you uh, help me sail this thing to my home so I can see what's going on. Party? Marcus, thank you for the bits. <laughs> Love that. Love that for us. We're hot right here. <laughs> Every time I come in, I always do that. <laughs> Party, what say ye? I will also add, I'm leaving out the rationality entirely, but it it suffice, suffice it to say that Gust is adamant that Zahn, which is located directly under Piltover, is exactly where he wants to go as well for family reasons of a different type. You know what? Bugaboos means family, and family means no one gets left behind. Or After forgotten. After all you've done Let's for us, there. Amy. 
the least we could do is to accompany you. My thank yous. Alrighty, Ruski. We love to see now that. Now get to work, Krebs. Pull that anchor up. Let's get moving. Von yeah, Ru's going to start kind of shouting some directions. She's probably going to climb up in the rafters to get the sails going. All right, we're furling the main sail. Uh, Sylvan, you've recently been gifted a hawk. As you recall, oh, what did I even name in the picture? I think you said Ashira. Ashira, yeah, that's was, right. Yeah. Good memory. Yeah, the you. hawk is in the picture. That's, mm -hmm. that's cool. What picture? I don't. We're in real life now. <laughs> That picture's my background on my computer now. Yep. Oh it's, my god. It's my Facebook. Oh, I already. should do that. That's and great. it's also my Discord picture now. Yep. Ooh, that's what I should do. That's a good idea. Yep. Discord yep. picture. We're all so excited, yeah. dude. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so fucking cool, man. It's so cool. It's my background and my Discord picture. Oh, Rue is just pulling some rope and doing some right, boat yeah, things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I res She's I respect, weirdly embarrassed. We're not sure why. <laughs> I respect that you don't feel like being in the limelight anymore, and I, that's fine <laughs> with moving on into what's happening next. <laughs> that's that's perfectly <clears throat> all right. Uh, I have to pull up a picture of the entire map so you guys can get a view for um, what the landscape looks like on your way down. You see, as you all know, trying to go northeast and down is entirely Noxus territory and very dangerous. Unlikely you guys would want to go that path. Is, are we kind of in agreement there? I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying it probably isn't a great idea. Yarg. Yarg, no, indeed. Avoid that if possible. Yeah, it's surely instant death, um, which would be a oh. huge damper on this campaign, which has gone so swell so far. Sound like a plane. T-P-K. T-P-K. <laughs> T-P-K. Boats, 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 boats. I need new characters to draw people. But boats and hoes? <laughs> you are headed from the Freljord back down and out. You're going to head through the channel, which makes the most sense, on to Piltover and Zahn. Now, if you guys, with? If you guys don't mind metagaming with me for just a minute here. All right. The way I envision the campaign moving forward is Bilgewater is entirely Ezra and LaRue. Backstory City plus Piratey Adventures, very uh, Pillars of Eternity 2, if you will. And Shadow Isles um, is a really great finale and also exactly where that little bit of history you and I talked about, Sylvan, leads to. So basically, okay. as the campaign goes, if you head southeast, you hit all of the things... And then we get to level, I don't know, somewhere between 15 and 20, and have we have a big final shebang, and that will actually wrap up campaign one. So two chapters finished of what could be five and a half chapters, potentially. Three, four, five, and then the sixth final chapter, which is kind of like when they make a movie be the series finale instead, you know? Mm -hmm. Like Black Clover? Yeah. Six seasons in a movie. Yep, yep six seasons in a movie. That's, that's kind of what I envision um, for how the rest of the campaign will shape up as we move forward. But for now, we don't have to worry about that because as we are rolling just around this island here, another ship comes into view. Do we recognize this ship? Yes, indeed. You recognize it as a ship <clears throat> in the employ of your own ship's arch enemy Mr. Gang Plank oh no I already killed him in a one shot like a couple months ago that wasn't canon was it mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> it was just teaching one your friends how to play Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> <laughs> it was just teaching your friends how to play Dungeons and Dragons Shab was there <laughs> yeah I know With a, also, but not even on Gust on some random ass character no. canonically okay, um, canonically specifically LaRue does believe that she contributed to Gangplank's demise. However, ooh, ooh, there, okay. there have been breadcrumbs dropped in this campaign. Earlier in Sharima, there was a lot of big weapons and stuff that Amy was finding that were signed GP, alluding to the fact that he may still be alive. Hmm. Uh, 
Rue is gonna is gonna call out to the others and she's gonna say like, Hey, eyes up everybody. We've got some friends incoming. Oi. They are headed directly for you. They've got a center facing who is somebody listening You've got to me? Some echo. Can hear me? Yeah, I don't know. I heard you for a second. Yeah. I only heard the echo weird. for arrow. I don't have it. I think it's done. Whatever whatever happened, it's done. Um, The ship is, in fact, headed directly for you. Amy, do we have any defense on this boat? Yeah, we have six cannons. Sick. All right. Um, Ezra wants to stop. But there's three on a side, so maneuver us to angle to one side to shoot and then cut the other way to shoot again if you don't think we can run away fast enough where are all three cannons at just two in the top two in the middle two in the bottom no they're all on the deck and uh there's three on the port and three on the starboard just equally spaced down the you, you can actually see it like how it sits on yeah. the uh picture here like three and three perfect then yeah I want to try to man as much as I can the one the left where I'm at right now. Those three. So, uh, and, and Amy, I'm gonna say we've actually got three, five, ten cannons total, just because it it's what's on the picture, and I'll just go with that. All right, believable. I can't really see the picture totally, so mm -hmm. I I the thumbnail shows me <laughs> yeah, there's three forward and two rear. Yep. Mm -hmm. and that's the same on both. I'm sure that I'm sure that Gus would want to be involved with cannon stuff. Oh yeah, he he loves cannon. Yep. Who else Can I to... tell him to be ready if we have to cut and run, and then I'm gonna, you know, he he does wind things, and we can do something with the sail if we're uh. He will begrudgingly because he just wants to be in the spotlight so bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> get up here, get up here in the sails, and agree that his his prowess is probably best spent manipulating the sails. We can also have him doing some look up, look out up there while the rest of us man the cannons, if that sounds good. All right. And Sylvan, maybe your new hawk friend can, uh, eagle whatever, I forget, can get out there and take a look oh, the at Falcon. it. Like they're preparing to attack or what they're up to and come back and tell us. Oh, this, this hawk, does it work basically like a uh, familiar? Does it have a stat block? Does it... Does not work like a familiar. Um, it is essentially an arcane hawk, so it's not a truly living being. It is. It's just not, if that makes sense. It's okay. magic. Um, it can obey <laughs> commands, and it can basically scout for you. Other than that, nothing's ever going to be And fairy be fire. Able, like, if, if it kills, it sort of pops like a familiar, but it's gone from you forever. This is not in your employ. It just happens to be hanging with you for some unknown reason. Wait, so you said if it if it dies, it's gone forever? It's gone forever. Fairy fire too, and it does it casts fairy fire basically. Okay, um, yeah, I'll send it out to scout, keeping a high, staying out of range. I hope it has good eyesight. All right, <laughs> and what's his name? Alicia, Ashira. <laughs> Getting so late, so. All right, it's going to go out. The other cannoneers of the other ship are doing something as well on their turn. We're doing this kind of fluid, because I think ship battles are kind of more fun to be a little bit more fluid. Who else is getting on guns? We've got Galio on a gun. Ezra, did you say you are getting on a gun? Absolutely. positively. All right. I'll Sylvan. be on a gun. Yes, um, no? Yeah, I'll try a cannon, sure. <laughs> I don't think anyone here is proficient to cannons, minus Amy. Uh, Halith is like, Dad, I'm with you, right by your side. He has gotten ginormous by now. His his claws are too long. He's unkempt. Obviously, has not been taking care of like grooming standards for himself. He's very much in in uh, uh, what's their what's their uh, race? I forgot. Oh, Kilosh. He's very much in Kilosh puberty currently. Just raring to go. In this case, with the cannon. Uh, Amy Proto. You are currently below decks, correct? Well, no, I was running around loading cannons. I did yell out that we had people incoming, Company. so she probably would have heard that and come up. Fair enough. Cannons are manned. Uh, LaRue, are you at the wheel then? 
Yeah, I'll do that. At the stern? What is it, was it called? Yeah. Is it called the stern? I believe the so. stern is the back of the ship. The wheelhouse is the wheel. The... There we go. We were half right. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Okay. And we get into our know, offensive side cannon position as it heads directly for you. A very large fireball comes <laughs> flying and plops. Seizing and almost like a meteor thrown from the other ship directly over lands behind yours. It is currently out of range of your cannons. Sylvan, your hawk returns with the news that they're equipped with some sort of like catapult like launchers that they're dropping this like green goo into these like fiery stones for lack of a better phrase and throwing them at you, and they obviously have a much greater distance than your cannons. They consider it likely they'll be at least... The, the hawk, and it's a pretty sentient, it's a genius-ass hawk, is able to let you know that it, judging time-distance gap, it's likely that they'll be able to send one more barrage at you before the your cannons are in distance. All right. They have us outranged. We're going to have to brace for impact if we keep this up. <laughs> Let's see if they have any aim, though. Ooh, a 17 and a 19 says yes. Ugh. Now, ship damage oh. is going to be a little bit different. Um, oh, I get to roll on my cool chart. On the D10 here, I have different pieces of the ship basically broken up into tenths. Um, essentially, on a one, hits the bow. Two, it hits where you guys are all standing. Three, opposite cannons. Four, middle, five, across. Six for Sylvan and uh, Halith are standing. Seven, side cannons. Eight, back left. Nine, back right. And ten, far into the stern. Four. One, two, three, four. We'll land directly in between you guys, so no deck saves, no damage to you guys. Just damage to the ship. Big hits. And the second cannon, number seven... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is on your second set of, oops, second set of cannons in the uh, top right, if you will. And those will take a hefty amount of damage as well. Basically, completely bursts the side of your ship right in between where you two groups are standing, and you can see that your ship is taking on water. Oh, great. And I don't know also anything on about fire boats. with green fire. I know nothing about boats, and I don't know what to do. All right, so... Uh, how, big, uh, how big is the fire? The fire's not too big yet. It's sort of... I'll, I'll paint a little picture here, but it's surface flames of green flame that are just getting to, like, the handrail on the side of the ship. All right, I'm going to try the Scepter of Frozen Command and hit as much of the flames I can with a ray of frost and see if Magic Frost will cancel out the uh, presumably Magic Fire. All right. Amy is getting to work with Fire Extinguishing. Away is the enemy ship. In cannon range now. Is it within 300 feet? No. Okay. Let's go with like 500. Got you. But okay. approaching fast. Okay. On the next round, uh, they will be within 300. This or do we want to run? If Amy cannot put out the flames, I want to try to breath weapon it. Basically blow my dragon fire ice at it. That's That's got a max range of like 30 feet, right? It does. All right. I'll keep that in mind as a held action. Keep that in mind. 15, sorry, that's 15 mm. feet. I'll keep it in mind all the same. <laughs> I... But are you talking about the fire? Or are, you talking about... are you talking about the fire? No, or the it's... Shit? it's just breath weapon silver, it's a cold. No, are you talking about putting out the fire? 
Yes. Okay, for some reason, Marcus, I'm so sorry. I literally thought you would, like, I didn't even give you the benefit of the doubt. I was like, all right, if you're going to hit the ship with your fucking breath. And I literally I thought, thought you were, gonna, you were like, doing that, too. Yeah, I don't, it may have been your verbiage, but, like, I, for some reason, definitely thought that you were talking about the enemy ship. I was like, all right, dude, they're going to be awful close by then, but okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. No! Between you and Amy, I will say you're able to put out the flames. Cool. As you guys oh. are, like, squirtle squatting. I have trick up please. Was oh, that LaRue? Do we want to fight or do we want to run? We should take some pot shots while they're in range, at least. I think it's probably too late to run, but what I yell is, if they're using catapults, they probably have a minimum range. We want to get right up next to them because our cannons work at point-blank range, but there's no way they can hit us with a catapult if we're only, like... 40, 50 feet off their, off their, uh, I have... railing. Well, if we get in range, I can hold them. Does our ship have a battery ram? I got ram? one spell. <laughs> can we just I have ram? fog cloud. That's I was cool. just recently talking to Sylvan about the fact that I have fog cloud and I've never used it. This is the time to use it. <laughs> we literally Sylvan, talked about Sylvan's this last Sylvan's looking session. at you going. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Funny how oh, the universe works, isn't it? Um, if I cast it at a higher level, because now that we're level 7, I can do second level spells, um, theoretically, um, I can do up to like 40 feet, I think it is, and they'll probably think we're cutting and running if we're doing something like that, but hey, what if we do the fog cloud and run towards them instead of away from them? I like it. It's ballsy. What are you gonna choose? Ship is approaching. Pick one. What are you doing? You're the captain. We're, we're going. Forward. Doing it. All right. <laughs> doing it. The sneaky. I'm casting offense. fog cloud. I love fog it. Fog cloud. I'm. I'm okay. casting fog cloud at level two, and I'm turning the ship towards them, and I'm telling Gus to just. Blow. To just send it? <laughs> Give me one Full send. So, uh, My before... internet keeps cutting in now. Are, can you guys hear me, or...? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Fine. I have to charge okay. my phone, my battery dead, but I, um, before we let these cannonballs start flying, I want to know if I can use heat metal on the cannonballs prior to shooting them out. Sure. Ooh, that's dope. That's a cool so idea. So we can shoot out, like, a molten cannonball to try to like set their ship on fire yeah can i create a bonfire on my cannonball uh yeah yes you may yo Should we wait until we Good get idea, out of the fog cloud so that they don't see this coming no they, they basically they're sending these and that's the last thing that happens before they've got these two fiery cannonballs firing back at them and then the fog cloud pops as the smoke pops, if that makes sense. Okay. Dope. Fire. All right. Let me. Mm. It's a dope idea, Ezra. That's cool. Right? Yeah. Sylvan right. stoked, like, awesome. <laughs> Fire. And we... We're so going to die. No. No, I, I have a plan. If we get close, I can do something <laughs> cool here. Are there any, is there any oh land here for me in open ocean? Open ocean. Yeah, cool. It is what it is. It, it is, is what it is. is. Alright, how do I paint this so that you're right on top of them? Layer. Gem layer? I, on, I honestly, I don't know how to do this. I've never, I've never tried to do this before. Uh, that do, was kind of cool. Can't you change things from front to back? So put it on the normal layer and then just change it. Uh, I'm gonna throw up. I'm fucking everything up. <laughs> <laughs> there an undo oh, no. button. Okay, wait. Okay, there we go. And then, and then hit the second boat and put send to back or to back. Boom! Hey, Wait, you're so go. smart. Now we're right up on him. Right up on him. 
Are we that close? Oh, yeah. No. Wait, we're 10 feet away? Yeah, you sent it. Shit. <laughs> okay, I hope we had Wait. the element of surprise. Everybody fire. So they, Wait, were, I wanted to... they were within 500 feet. You pop smoke and turn to meet them. I'm, I was waiting for 300 feet of range. Yes, Am but I you also created a bonfire point? and then sent it out of a cannon, right? Yes. So I, I took your... Whatever you were going to do at 300 feet became bonfire and cannonball. Oh, I thought I had more time. Okay. No, I'm sorry, man. I like at uh, least a minute before we were that close. So while we, t while we turned to meet them, did we get off the cannonball round as we were turning? Yeah, that was the one. And then now we're this now we're nice and close and personal. You know what? Fucking fine. <laughs> G give me your second round of actions in between those two while you're sitting there in a fog cloud. Within 300 feet. Within 300 feet. All right. Um, Sylvan is going to rush up to the edge of the ship and try something new that he's recently been able to do. Um, he's going to raise his hands and commune with the water spirits and the ocean is going to begin to swell and I'm going to cast control water and a 20 foot wave is going to begin to rise over the front of their ship and throw it 20 feet back and spin it. All right. Larue is giving you the biggest thumbs up. And it see, Larue is doing jumping jacks. She's so stoked. It says according to the spell it says that that actually has a... Um, what is it here? Can't you, like, capsize the ship, too? Can't yeah, you? there is a 25% chance of their ship capsizing if it is huge or smaller. It is huge. Actually, I guess it's medium-sized ship because it's about the same size as your ship. It just has cannons on it. Uh, 25%? Fucking you roll it, man. Okay. What What is the... What, what am I rolling for? I have a d4 here. All right. Fucking one to four. Four sink ship. Oh, it fell. Ah! Four. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> Four. I swear to God. We love to see Let's it. Go. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to have to make these pictures smaller so I can paint the picture a little bit better. <laughs> Kill Arrow's boat fight, like, in one round. No, it's okay. I actually got what I needed out of you guys way ahead of the, like... The fact that you took the cannon shot was what I needed for this adventure to continue forward. I hate to use you guys like that, but I'll be real. He said it's on a one-way ticket. That's how one shots work. Oh, boat, boat, boat. Boats and hoes, boats and hoes. All right. Just as the two ships are about to collide head on, Sylvan stepping up to the front like Moses parts the seas and as the tidal wave comes up and again this is pure daylight it's like 11 a.m. as the tidal wave comes up <laughs> and crashes you hear the crunch and crack of an entire ship giving way to the power of the ocean and the entire thing capsizes and sinks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Literally just gonna run, run up to Sylvan and give him the biggest hug. She probably is like maybe like chest level or shorter. Maybe just ribs. She's just like that was I amazing. I was gonna lean in. I didn't know that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be way smaller. <laughs> Petit Larue is looking over the side like blood for the blood god. <laughs> That's it. I got totally got to figure out how to make ours fly so we don't have these problems again. True. That was incredible, you guys. That was so We're the best but... pirates ever! Are there any, like, survivors flung free or anything just floating out there in the water? Um, yeah, there's a couple that appear to be looking to try and survive, yeah. Alright, oh. well, let's uh, go pick them up out of the water and find out what they wanted and what they were up to, etc. Or we can leave them to drown. <sighs> yeah, but I'd rather know why they came after us immediately and if they can tell us anything about the rumors of um, 
LG or GL, whatever it is. GP. I will Should save I go you look some for time. One? I'll save you some time. Totally manageable. And they will, in fact, tell you that they are an employee of Gangplank. You guys are quite convincing. Again, uh, I told you guys as you guys leveled up more that some things are just going to, like, it's sort of assumed or given that, like, you're going to be able to handle stuff. So level 7 characters can absolutely interrogate, like, level nothing pirates that they found on the high sea. So th this information mm. will come relatively freely because they're scared for their lives. And you I'd like to know anything I can like about Gangplank. <laughs> <laughs> give you the information uh, uh, and to use a military uh, thing like the privates don't see the big picture they just see get on the boat and shoot the guns a lot of the time right right uh, but you you did capture two cannoneers uh, Merriweather and Jackson Brixton Merriweather Brixton Jackson and Jackson Brixton, Brixton. <laughs> I'm gonna speak up and I say I hear there's something as a plank can I put one off of them can They're I push one off <laughs> Roll me intimidation, and while you do that, I'll give you some more information. They're both Shreeman natives that found themselves in the employ of Gangplank when they started moving uh, radioactive material of some kind. They have no idea what it actually is. It's this green glowing goop. They said that their boss, this is boss's boss, the Gangplank himself has been um, gathering like a huge, like an, insurmount an insurmountable amount of it and using it, uh, and basically they've been um, embar or trading that all the way up to the uh, nation of Noxus for some sort of reason. Beyond that, they have no idea. Okay, 9 plus 5 is a 14. For intimidation. 14. They're intimidated. <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to yell it out to like someone who knows about boats. Like, what's, what's a plank? Can I push one off? I know nothing about boats. <laughs> Just leave them alone. For it now. Forget okay, it. You're please. from the snow place. I'm gonna look at Merriweather. I'm like, if you fuck around, I'm gonna throw you off the plane. <laughs> Merriweather's like, I, I don't want to die. I was just making a quick coin. I'm sorry. We shoot everything. We we rob everyone. It's just what we do. Yeah, Rue's gonna. Larue's gonna go ahead and pull out her rapier, and she's gonna point it at them, and she's gonna ask them, "You shoot at everyone, or were you told to come for us?" No, everyone. <laughs> That's what, that's what we do, and Leru, you would recognize that as generally like when when ships in that in that uh, or when crewmen. I, how do you phrase this? It's like a clan seamen guild. When seamen, <laughs> what is the navy? <laughs> but no, um, basically all all of those employed by Gangplank for his wishes. Basically, you get the gist. Like if if the ship isn't Noxian, who they're employed by, is what you glean from this or another of their own fleet, they just send it. They're of the opinion that they are basically their own navy and that they can do what they want. And the worst that can happen is they send it first and die in the process, which for many of them happened here. But they're, they're a rather ruthless, Again. cutless, but fearless for whatever amount of respect you can give them for that bunch. Boat name again? Like Rainbow Kitten Surprise or something? You're, yeah, your boats. You, you still haven't renamed your boat. So okay, I'm going to go ahead, Rapier is still at his neck, and I'm going to say, we're going to let you go, and you're going to go back to your boss, and you're going to tell your boss to tell his boss to tell his boss to tell his boss not to fuck with the Rainbow Kitten surprise. And if I see you, Mary, whatever, well, throw you off the plank. <laughs> it's true. He's Dudes, crazy. they're going to be stuck with you. I've seen him do it a dozen times. I've seen him do it. I've tried to stop him. He's a madman. <laughs> he gets this look in his eyes. <laughs> He's a fucking dragon. <laughs> mm. They're they're just pretty scared, legitimately. They're and for for whatever it's worth, I don't need an insight check from you guys. You can tell that these were obviously two basically like street urchins from Sharima that just were looking to make a coin and got on what you might consider the right boat or the wrong boat. Um Anyways, but now you've got them. The rest of their wreckage is gone, as well as their crew. And they're on your ship. Your ship also has a giant hole in it and is still taking on water. Oh, um, oh yeah. Go start uh, dealing with that. <laughs> yes. um, I, I'll use shape water just to try to keep water out and, like, bail, as I assume Amy is yeah, <laughs> handling I'll structural things. Be grabbing any pieces using mending spell using actual i have woodworking uh proficiency 
and uh, start by fixing the hole and worry about pretty and fine things later. Despite your attempts, you basically took an asteroid to the side of your ship and it continues to take on water. Right, Ezra, we gotta find land. Yes. Being the only one not necessarily involved with direct repair of the ship currently or the way it's floating, uh, Meriwether Brixton actually says, hey, there's a dock. It's that way. You can see it from here. He points. There is just like this much land you can you can see on the horizon to the east, which are those small islands I mentioned earlier, the ones like just to the west of Damasia there. Right. Well, seeing as how I don't want my ship or my crew to go down into the uh, dark abyss, I think that's probably going to be our best option. And I let everybody know. Hey, the prisoner says there's a dock that way. As, as you say that boldly about, you can see that Amy and Sylvan are just working their asses off, like literally trying to push water and build, like like as if the ark had not gotten completed in time, and they're just pushing their best. <laughs> Gust is up <laughs> with the sail. Haleth is doing everything Gust is telling him to do. Larue is like shouting orders. Galio is threatening the prisoners. I am going to grab Meriwether around the shoulders and just tell him a nice dragon story. Okay. <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> so everybody else, for the most part, is gainfully employed. Um, uh, what, what were you saying, Ezra? Your your announcement? I apologize. Oh no, I'm just going to let everyone know that we need to start heading to that to uh to land before we go under. Agreed, I'm not going to be able to save this one as I throw a web to put a bunch of wood in place and then start melding it like a wood welder. Can I help you by freezing the ice? I could freeze it with control water. Can I like try to freeze it in the frame of a ship? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it will keep it from coming in and would keep it out and ice float. So yes, go for it. You're like All right. there and the there and there. Would I? Would I? Would Ezra, what I were you last night? Would Ezra also be able to uh, <laughs> go into the ship where it's taking water and you cast destroy water? I mean, destroy for the water? whole ocean. Destroy up to ten water. gallons of water. So if they're like, you, you know, we have like a foot. Destroy water. I don't even yeah, that spell. Isn't it create create destroy, or destroy water? water declare oh, spell. Yeah. I only, I only ever call that spell create water. Yes, you would be doing the opposite of what um, Sylvan is doing, which would still be appropriate, as you're basically pushing water out while he's freezing the rest, while Amy's trying to rebuild the boat on top of it. All right, Thanks. I'm going to go ahead and go up with Gust, and we're going to get the boat headed towards the dock that Ezra had pointed out to us. All right. The dock is not too far. The three of you down there are able to keep it afloat. It doesn't take on too much water, but you are up to like your ankles in water taken on, which is going to be probably annoying for your soggy feet if you're not a big fan of that. But you do, are able to float it there, acknowledging that generally you are going to need more repair than what you've got. And you're greeted by a rather interesting sight. Oh. As you make it to the dock, which is big enough to fit your ship, which isn't that big in general, you can see that all of the buildings here are built to look like mushroom-sized houses. Wait, mushroom-sized houses or house-sized Sorry, house-sized mushrooms. <laughs> house-sized mushrooms. It's like a... It's like, that's so cute. <laughs> in fact, the Smurfs. Or what's the Smurfs? It's, it is just like the Smurfs. Um, look at this, look. All of these mushroom house-sized little people, like little hobbit houses that look like mushrooms, as well as what is obviously the ability, um, or what is obviously a lot of Hextech crafting material. There's all these, like, cogs and electrical currencies going in between the two, so it's like a very futuristic mushroom village. Oh my god, steampunk island. gnomes. It's, it's steampunk. <laughs> it, it actually literally is steampunk smurfs here on this island. I love it here. <laughs> Let's stay forever. <laughs> New home. Okay, As... we're gonna get the boat docked. As Do we see anybody? Docks, you get the last of your uh, repairs done, at least to be able to keep it afloat. And what walks out are what just appear to be like a crew of 20, almost 30 little gnomes with blue skin, all different ages and colors, just all these little white-haired, gray-haired some, even black hair on the, some of the younger ones, 
little blue-haired gnomes, long pointy ears, and they're all dressed up like craftsmen of some sort. Most of them wear coveralls or overalls, white shirts, brown pants. And one tall, slender human amongst them all who shouts, Greetings! Ho there! You found my island! Hello there, my good sir. Yes, we have found your island. What a nice island it is. I really like the mushrooms. I like what you're doing with the place. It looks fantastic. Don't um, compliment uh... me. Compliment the Yordles. They love their little mushroom farm. Ezra looks down at the Yordles. They all sort of like my... murmur in agreement and it just smiles and giggles. Oh. <laughs> uh, nice farm you got here, Yordles. With a little half smile, half frown, wince, little look. I think I see where you're coming from here. Oh, my camera's back on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed! That's right. I and the Yordles here man this mushroom farm where inventors, craftsmen, hextech machinists. Oh, as I hear him say that, a little light bulb goes off him. Like, Ding! And I look over at Amy, and I run over to Amy, and I start pushing Amy towards the human. Hex Amy tech. some suggestive eyebrows, like, ah, eh, machines, <laughs> Machines, eh. things! We have a crew <laughs> member that's really good at stuff like that. Isn't that right, Amy? <laughs> Hail, tall person among the yordles. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, I'm, uh... Artificer from Piltover. An artificer. Uh, I, I would love to uh, share some ideas and design stuff with you, but my immediate problem is keeping this ship from hitting the bottom of your bay. You guys have any sort of cargo cranes or anything that we can use to hook up to from the dock to keep her from going down till I got time Do to make full repairs. Have. Do we have? Did you hear her? And all the yordles sort of like, ha, 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 all giggle in unison. He goes, why don't you go ahead and get the Hextech cranes on out? And you can see that several of them scamper off and come back in these little, like, they're like little bobcats and little cranes. They're miniature sized. They're yordle sized. Um, and they all have <laughs> blue glowing crystals and gears, and they all come out and immediately get to work on your ship, actually. And he says, don't you worry one thing about this fine vassal. What do you call it? What is her name? The Rainbow the Kitten name. Surprise. The Rainbow Kitten. Um, little wink. He ding. he looks back to you, Amy, to, <laughs> to see whether or not Ezra is kidding. No, that was the name it had when we bought it, and we haven't done anything about changing it yet. A fine vessel with a fine hole. Not too long, I hope. <laughs> Isn't that right, Yordles? And all of them. <laughs> Together. Ezra's picked up on the laugh too. <laughs> I take it back. I want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> How Petit Larue interacting with the Yordles? Okay, um, they they all sort of get in like a circle, and Petit Larue's like break dancing in between them. They're all like clapping. <laughs> One of them pulled out like a very small viola, and it's like, <laughs> and all of them like at the same time as Larue's. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's off. Incredible. <laughs> Okay, we can stay. We can stay for a pretty <laughs> I'll drink to that. Incredible. I'll indeed. drink to that. Um, the, the gist of the conversation at this moment, Amy, is that uh, the fellow introduces himself as a man named Dr. Yatesy McBoyle. Y Dr. Yatesy McBoyle, Hextech Machinist. Basically, He's been he's been begging for like a big work for his yordles to practice all their new machinery on. So if you'll let him, he'll do the repairs for free, and he wants to actually show you around the island. Well, certainly. Um, if you could get them to stay to wood, if you have it as much as possible, so we're not off balance by using metal or bronze or something. And I would certainly love to explore your island with you. Lead on, sir. Of course. The Yordles wouldn't have a problem using wood. Would you, Yordles? And remember in Toy Story when all the toys at the same time, all the ones in the vending machine go, no. <laughs> the fucking aliens in the fucking, the claw. Yeah, that's the claw. The aliens in the claw machine. He's like, you guys wouldn't mind using wood, right? All of them at the same time are like, 
no, sir. And he's like, they're just great, aren't they? Can you believe they <laughs> let me fit in their society? Me, of all people. This is a six foot tall man, late 30s, weird scraggly beard, doesn't grow in a lot of places, very patchy, ugly mustache, very long teeth. He's wearing this really long trench coat, right hand, obviously Hextech itself, no longer a human arm. Oh, it would, cool arm. It would probably be rude if I ask really invasive questions on this total stranger who's helping us out, so I'll hold my tongue for at least 20 minutes. It may be, but, and this is going to be before we take a little, quick little break here so I can use a little potty break and also pour up a, the last drinky of my drinkings for another couple weeks, actually. I won't drink for a couple weeks after this last little bourbon I pour. Bourbon I pour. There we go. Um... He's going to lead Amy. Amy, he wants to take you to his workshop and show you a bunch of cool stuff. Starts talking, you know, he's like, it's just so good to finally find someone who who, who will probably understand me, understand where I'm coming from. I, I have a hard time really relating to people, you know, uh, Im implying that potentially because you're not exactly human, you may be able to understand his means better. However, that does not necessarily mean that the rest of the party has to get roped into what's going on. Gust and Halith will volunteer to supervise the services on the ship to make sure nothing is cr uh, shady is happening. So while we go on break, think about what other things you guys might want to do or if you just want to go with Amy. All right. All right. All right. Coolioli. I'm going to remember to turn off my microphone on stream as well because last time I was singing and peeing. <laughs> 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 and everybody heard it. <laughs> But that's awesome. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Break starts now. Let's call it a couple minutes. Well. Now that we're off the clock, Danny, oh. this drawing? So sick. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sick. Embarrassed. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Look at you sit in it. Sit in the fame and just, Ugh. like, thrive, because you deserve it. I don't know. It's, like, this weird thing where I'm, like, proud of it because I think it looks good, but I'm also tentative to share it with people because it's about inherently nerdy source material. So I don't want to put it on, like, my art Instagram because that's for, like, my serious landscape portraits and art, like, murals on walls and fucking resin. So it's feel weird. like it's equally valid. I think it's dope. Because cartoon is not a valid art form at all. Cartoons I aren't real art. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> at the internet, that was sarcastic. Please don't come for me. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> but I do. I, I spent a lot of time on, on Sylvan. I hope that you liked him. I love Sylvan. Um... He, he looks great. I love that you got the hawk in there. I love that my you had the earring and the arm and like all the details. It's so cool. It's already my my Discord profile. Oh my god, I didn't know what your staff looked like, so I just added some fucking mushrooms. I love that you did. No, like I, I like love the mushrooms that you did. a lot. The, I the, love the mushrooms. staff actually might be one of my favorite parts of that piece because it was just really fun to do mushrooms on it. It's so cool. Like and I can change thing. whatever if I you love want the like different stuff. The the shirt, the like vines. Yeah. Like going down, it's, it's so cool. Danny, it's so cool. The mushrooms are sick. Wait, I'm like really looking at them now. You know those? The only, oh, they're, they're right there. Oh my god. I can Oy. change anything. So like, if Marcus, if you have like a symbol that Galio has for like the Freyord, or like Justin, if you want like a different color stone in the staff or something. I like how you put all. I like how you gave us all a little medal from the Frey Lord. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted didn't to give even us... notice that. Yeah, it felt kind of weird adding it to Sylvan because I was like, he doesn't like metal, so I kind of hid it underneath the vines. I see that now. <laughs> <laughs> but I like feel like you would still wear it, but I don't know. Let me know what your character would do. Yeah, probably. It seems like what everyone else is doing. Like it's probably important to people. I tried to make a little symbol for us, and I did like, you know, like the like the Nordic B rune, like part of Bluetooth. But I just did it back to back, which is probably a real sign of something pagan that 
I don't know, I might be cursing all of us. It's fine. But if anyone has better ideas for a logo, I could put that on them. Oh, like yeah. a logo for the bugaboos? Yeah. You know, because in the last session we talked about making uh, like little tags for everybody to put on their armor or whatever. Oh my god, wait. I didn't realize I had level 4 spells until like we started today. And I can make so many centipedes. Sorry, I'm distracted. <laughs> Um, logo would be cool for the bugaboos. What would the what would a bugaboo logo even be? I can uh, let me draw out what I was thinking just super fast and put it on the Discord. It's just mischief. Just mischief. so convenient having an artist in the uh, in the campaign. <laughs> if you honestly just ha look up like kindergarten drawings and the first one you see, that's a bugaboo's logo. That's kind of how we are. True. Kindergarten draw. I'll look that up right now. Let's see. A bunch of kindergartners running around. Like, oh, that looks cool. Let's go fight that. <laughs> I, mean, I actually just put the uh, picture you drew on r slash D&D. &D. Nice. I should do well. Danny, it's so good. I'm like, I'm kind of obsessed. <laughs> it's so fucking cool. Don't you have to, it's going to get removed. You have to, any t anything you post on r slash D&D, you need to have a write-up. Then it'll get removed. I'll that's post not, it later. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the point. Well, I can, I can post it later with like a write-up or something. And I could even tag our little Twitch stream. Oh no, I probably shouldn't. I don't know oh, how yeah, people feel that. about self promotion. Be fucking awesome. Oh yeah, people hate promotion on. Uh... You're right. You're right. Reddit, <laughs> Reddit's the place to not do that. Everywhere else would have been yeah. safe. They take it so seriously. Yeah. I just put my little uh, theoretical bugaboo symbol in the D and D dubs chat. Like a Zoro style. Because <laughs> I, uh, I tried to do two Bs. Yeah, I feel that's... like that is something. Yeah. Well, I mean. It's Big Black from Robin Big. Yeah, I was about to pull that up. You beat me to it. <laughs> it is. I was like, I feel like no, it's a not, pagan not exactly symbol. like that, but the but the Big Black logo from Robin Big. Rest in peace, our friend. Um, R.I.P. Yeah. You. I'm back. I definitely Forgot thought it was a rune, but that is actually funnier. I think we should keep it then. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I love that. I'm, I'm all for it. All right. Let me start hey, painting a scene. Yes, my friend. Um, I have been racking my brain literally all day, and I cannot remember mm -hmm. a single detail of what we talked about. I didn't write it down. Can you give me like a keyword, a buzzword, or something? Because ruined king. Ruined. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I've, I've been sitting like... here like for hours, like. What the fuck did we talk about? <laughs> I know we did. Were you drinking that night? Oh yeah. Dude, you almost made me <laughs> Oh yeah. Yo, you almost made me cry, bro. What? Fucking What? We we talked about your um We talked about that stuff and I was like, "All right, let's let's head up to the to the um I was like, "Let's head back up to the other channel." And you were like, "Wait." And I was like, okay and you were like that was like the best game of dungeons and dragons i've like ever played and i was like thanks justin oh you were like you were like it was like a fucking 10 out of 10 i honestly i'm I, I, you were like and i was like justin like that <laughs> it was great I was like, justin. <laughs> it was great i don't like i i was great i don't know um a lot of fun i was I really happy with that one that was a good really that was, was a good session um cool Okay. Great. Oh wow, I used to make maps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Obviously I got tired of that. Uh Oi. But now I can't find any of my stuff. Uh, people are Oy. being nice to me on the internet and I don't like it. Oh, it's so much fun. What was that all about? Chillis Louie has gifted us. Oh, it's to 
Trey's in here, he didn't even say hi. Oh, and Ty's in here, we love to see that. Thanks for gifting that sub over to uh, to my friend Trey. He actually was in a 361 with me. I guess oh, how mom it works was, is in, I was the in the chat. With him. Yeah, mom. Our mom came oh. in to say that you look really nice, Justin. She oh. said, OMG, Justin, yeah. you look great. With three exclamation points. Wow. Ty Thanks, Lori. Said, what up? <laughs> <laughs> we love to see that. Oh, there we go. There we Miss go. Lori, tell her I say hi. Chill, it's Lou. You're gifted a lot of subs, brother. We appreciate all of them, of course. You know me and appreciate. Oh, and Lexi, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the pig pen. I, I'm your host, DM Dubs, the internet's favorite kind of buff <laughs> dungeon master. Hey, he OT says it bro. again. OT he said it again. <laughs> OT That's the thing. OT. Why I drew you very kindly? What is happening? <laughs> Thing. All right, I missed OT. OT, thank you for the follow. Days Unfold, thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. Welcome to Pigpen. Honorable Cow, thank you for the follow. Welcome to Pigpen. Wait, is this... Oh, this is Gifted Subs. This isn't Follows. Oh, my God. I was so confused Wait. for a second. I, I don't I even know what I the, bought. I was reading the Just Accepted the... Because it says, like, Just Accepted a Quest from the Putrid, putrid Pig... Putrid Pig <laughs> Pub. Um, Twitch is popping. If Ty wants to know if you guys are walking again or what. By the way, for everybody that just came in, we are on break right now. That's why we're basically just hecking off and there's no map up in front of us. Wow, we love to see that. All right, that's a lot of gifted subs and a lot of cool stuff. What else can I do besides gift subs? I just give them bits every now and again. How do you, really give, how do you give bits? I do like that symbol. Yeah, a bit, one bit is like one cent, too. It works out. It's, the, it's right next to the emojis, that right there. Unlock random sub emote? No, you see the emoji on the right side of the send message? To the very left at the very next symbol, click on it. Oh, that little triangle thing? Yeah. In the party with bit. Ah, there we go, found it. Map layer. All right. Of all of the mush, Amy Pred, are you back? Yes. All right. Of all of the mushroom shops, or of all of the mushroom buildings, there is one normal person-sized building, and that is uh, oh. Dr. Yatesy McBoyles. Oh. Dr. Yatesy I McBoyles want mushroom houses. <laughs> I assure you the rest are little mushroom houses. <laughs> okay. Is there any mushroom houses that were abandoned at all that we noticed? Uh, roll me an investigation. Are you going to break off from the party to investigate abandoned mushroom houses? No, just when we walk by, it, like, do we walk past any like abandoned mushroom so houses? It's, it's like hard. So imagine that you see like a mushroom. Thank you for the bits, Louie. <laughs> imagine that you see a mushroom with a closed door. And you're like, that one's probably empty. <laughs> yeah. I would like to look into a window. I want to see tiny mushroom furniture. If you're sitting at a mushroom table, I want to know if you sit on a toadstool. No, it's actually more like ranch style from Animal Crossing. Okay. Ranch? Yeah. No one laughed ranch. at my toadstool joke. I got... I, I... <laughs> I'll drink to your toadstool <laughs> joke. <laughs> I'll drink to that. You get it? You haven't drank to that You get yet. it? Here's to us, boys. And Wayne. And Amy. Here's to us. <coughs> Let everyone drink. I'll do it again. Because I wanted to cut off a piece of mushroom to see what a mushroom tastes like. <laughs> what does it taste like, Ali? It's, you can't it's, eat their houses. Are, yeah, these are just houses. Yeah, they're not really... Damn it! But they're actually large ass mushrooms they made in the houses. No, I'm sorry. I'm just picturing Galio trying to eat like a chunk of concrete. Like, and he's like, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> he's like, it's very cr uh, crunchy. <laughs> Needs salt, but overall, good texture. Source of iron. I want to saute that in some butter, mate. <laughs> All right. Amy is being led to the Hextech workshop. Who is going with it? Who is not? I am not. I am also not. All right. Sneak I'll let the nerds talk about their nerd them. things. I'm looking for three things on this island. Okay. Centipedes, uh -huh. spiders, okay. a scorpion. Roll me an investigation. 
speaks, there's Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> what is happening? Bears. Natural 20? Natural 20. Oh! You found all three. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Is that enough to get me 10 centipedes and three spiders and one scorpion? Sure. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah man. That 20 is nice, huh? <laughs> Great. I'm set. That's all I need. Roll the, roll the 20 on investigation to find insects and arthropods, so fuck it, man. <laughs> him, dude. If anyone finds, if anyone, you're the guy. Um, Alright, if anyone comes across Sylvan, he is just sitting somewhere speaking to a bunch of insects in his hands. I, I like it's to just... picture you, yeah, like seated, just giving them life lessons. Pretty much. Um, Ezra LaRue. Will you be joining Galio to find the empty mushrooms, or...? I'd like to sneak behind uh, Amy and Batesy? Yatesy? Yatesy. Yatesy McFoyle. Yatesy. No, I want, I like want you to, to keep in mind sneak. that it's not like Skyrim where you like left-click the, the button and you're just like unseen even though you're within like 20 feet. It is so, like, if I cast invisibility on myself. Well, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? It is. Are you casting invisibility. invisibility on yourself? I am. Okay. <laughs> is invisible amongst the the crew here. Is that a new spell for you, LaRue? It is! And Ooh. I have now burned both of my second level spell slots already. Oh wait, no! Uh, Fog Cloud was only... Uh, I probably burned it at level 2, not level 1. Yep, I'm done with my level 2 slots. <laughs> Who needs them? Yeah, level 3. We're so. probably gonna find something, but it's okay, because I don't... My spells more utility anyway. Hey, this is a one shot. What could go wrong? <laughs> if we die in a one shot, we don't die in the real story, you right? You canon. die in the real story. <laughs> this is canon. <laughs> <laughs> um, potato, I'm, potato. I'm gonna create another little. Let me find. Let me find a mushroom village to put you guys on. <laughs> I'm just gonna Google mushroom village battle map and see what I come up with. I am gonna the tell. Smurf village. I would like someone to babysit Petit LaRue for me. Um, I'll take her! Put on my show, I love the bloodlust. Hell yeah. My little bloodlust. Oh my god, <laughs> I found the one. Oh, they're not really mushrooms, though. That'll, that'll buff. Are you guys okay with pretending that they're mushrooms? Yeah, I can use my imagination. Alright, well, I'm gonna... The layout's, like, too perfect, so I'm gonna need you guys to just pretend that these are mushrooms, okay? Hey, man. I can imagine that Marcus is a dragon and that my dad is a hot robot lady, but I draw the line. You're the one that puts the word hot on it. You're the one that puts Mushroom. the word hot on it. Amy the thickums. <laughs> Amy eats her yams. Um, Ezra wants to um, look for, tr for, for, tr for booty and treasure on this island. Oh, did we keep the prisoners on the boat, or we just set them free? I figured we just tied them up. We we have a brig. You have a. They're brig. with Rat Boy. Tie him in the brig. The Rat Boy was getting lonely. Where what were their names they again? Go? Are they gonna Look. go? Just we Tony might as well Braxton just use them for free them? labor right now. Cause I want to go back Human and take Merryweather while he was all tied up and just show him around the mushroom village. <laughs> Very strange thing to do. That is a rather <laughs> peculiar. It's really weird. You've got a hostage on one shoulder and a murder puppet on the other. I'm Galio. What do you expect? Oh, it's <laughs> Honestly, so cute. Nothing much. Anyway, uh, hang on. One, one more. One more moment. I'm pretending those are mushrooms. No, I, I oh, have an idea for how to make mushroom. them mushrooms. Hang on. Really? Yeah. Let's just. No freaking way. An Does artist. he have the technology? I really think I do here. This is beyond science. <laughs> oh, <it's> still... <laughs> <laughs> that was worse. All right. uh, what do you want? There's a couple good ones in there. Yeah, those ones look good. That's exactly what I wanted. Oops. A green one? Yeah. Let's get some green mushrooms in here. This is beyond science. <laughs> 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 this is so stupid. <laughs> I love it. It's the best one shot ever. <laughs> uh, we, 
I, maybe I, maybe <laughs> my... <laughs> we have the technology. All right. <laughs> Wait, the... what about the last one? That's the one Amy's in. That's the normal person house. I'm so oh. mad I went there. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up! Alright, I need to put everybody on the map now. Amy is in this house. I'm gonna make you guys a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit better. LaRue is invisible, but with him, so you'll stay small right here. Crying up and crying right now. From what? Because <laughs> the mushrooms are so cute. <laughs> I'm just, gonna throw, I'm just gonna throw a random. Look, I know that this character I'm about to throw out looks super evil. Okay, I'm just picking a random one, alright? Uh huh. I'm just picking a random hey. one. We're about Everybody to spell all his name backwards. Does it spell <laughs> evil wizard again? Yeet Is this another McBoyle. live Drizu? <laughs> Yeetsy McBoyle. Yeetsy McBoyle. No, it's. It's Loibcum It's TA. That's pretty okay. evil. <laughs> I don't fucking trust with uh, it. Can I use tongues to try to understand? Is this what it's like <laughs> to have a party not trust you? All right, Sylvan, you're over here. You're over here in these trees. So Great. You're over here in these trees with all your new animal friends. That's exactly <laughs> where I envisioned myself right. in the trees. And Ezra, you said you're looking for treasure in the mushroom village. Uh, I'm gonna wander uh, uh, past the mushroom village if I can. How, I mean, how big is the island? Oh, it's small. You're pretty much yeah. seeing the whole thing. Then yeah, I'll just wander around the island then. All right. Look for, like X's in the sand. Yeah, looking for X's in the sand. <laughs> Ezra, specifically <laughs> for you, as you make your way up to this northeastern mushroom, there's one yordle, and it's got like a little cloak on. It looks, you know, you know how Raven looks from Teen Titans when she's got a cloak over and she looks very mysterious. Sexy. I do. I do. I wouldn't. I'm not sure if I'd classify this one as sexy, but there is one standing. <laughs> Like so, with her hood up, and she goes, Psst, hey, come here. What a suspicious looking character. As it starts walking close. Okay. <laughs> it's, and she's a little blue thing. Probably looks about mm, 22, 25, maybe, for Yordles. Um, the age conversion for that is relatively normal, like compared to human years. They're not like gnomes in the same regard. Um, she's like, Smoking a cigarette, she. You a narc? Am I a narc? You a narc. And I kind of reach out for her to pass me the cigarette. Yeah, like these come fucking cheap. She looks up. She's got a little eye patch. I rummage in my uh sack for some jinglings of coins, and I pull out. Uh. What a, a silver, she's silver like, piece. She's like, you don't smoke, honestly. She's like, I've ne I've never had mushroom cigarettes. It's just a regular ass cigarette. We're getting a little bit caught up on the mushroom things. It's just the houses. <laughs> <laughs> it's the mushroom cigarette. Come on. <laughs> it's the mushroom cigarette. I didn't even imply <laughs> that. <laughs> We're on the mushroom island. What else is going to be made out of? It's a mushroom cigarette. So Smoking a mushroom. She, she looks obviously visibly confused. She lifts up her eye patch, and she's got a regular working eye. And puts it back down, and she's like, hmm. You a cop? No, I'm not a cop. Are you here to help? Why do you have the eye patch on? Because it looks really cool, okay? I'm trying, I'm trying to do a thing, okay? Can I... Okay, and I lean in closer, she, and I say, personally... Goes, stop, stop, stop. H hang on, hang on, hang on. And she backs up all the way to the wall, puts the cloak back over, and lights a new cigarette. She's like, just go again. <laughs> all right, I'm going to fumble in my little bag. I'm going to pull out a uh, silver cigarette holder. I'm going to open it up, pull out my own. Are you a narc? Press it get a little flame on my thumb, and... <sighs> She lifts it back up again. She's like, that was really cool. I look around and I, and I attempt to get close again and I tell her, I'm trying to do a thing too. I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> bitch magic. And she puts it back on. She's like, act like a fucking professional. And she takes another drag from her cigarette. I'm going to grab my little Viking horn that I got from the Frey Lord and I'm just. Actually. Galio. Yeah. 
as you're walking around investigating, I'm, I'm going to start. Y we know that we love it when we start just doing everything at the same time, so everybody is confused. <laughs> <laughs> Galio. The best. As you are making your way, just sort of investigating, walking around, you, the majority, all there was like 30 yordles, roughly 20 of nine, 29 of them are working on the ship, and they, they were all very, it's strange almost how quickly they were willing to just help these strangers with their ship. They just agreed with uh, Mr. McBoyle and got right to work. They were pretty eager. As you walk past one of the uh, mushroom houses and look inside, this one doesn't have its curtains drawn, and there are two little yordle feet hanging from the mushroom ceiling. I'm going to try to, like, look up to see why the feet are hanging, like... Because, because there's a yordle hanging. <laughs> I, I know! <laughs> Wait. But I love, I love Galio, like, seeing that and going, what? And, like, tilting so he can see up. <laughs> I just wanted to be sure. Maybe he's just, like, doing some pull-ups. But no, he's definitely hanging. Aside from that... <laughs> There's a message written on the wall behind where the feet hang that says, free us. I'm going to keep walking and look at his mother houses. Oh. Didn't see anything. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> I'll let you know in a second. Sylvan, my friend, from where yes. you're seated, you can see Gust and Haleth supervising pretty well. The Yordles are doing fantastic work. They're working relatively diligently. What are you asking or talking to these uh, little critters about? Um, well, I'm getting a feel for how they feel about their current island, letting them know that, you know, I've got this great ship. I was thinking maybe I go take them on a tour of the ship, show them around, introduce them to Ashura, uh, let them know that they're going to be my companions for the foreseeable future, and that so will their offspring as I will be breeding them uh, in all eternity, they now belong to me. They're all pretty down with that. It appears that their leader <laughs> is actually the scorpion. Oh, okay, cool. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, the scorpion can be in charge of my little insect Hishtash. community. Hishtash. Hishtash. All right, let me edit his name here. Then. Hishtash. That's dope. Cool. Scorpion. Have you ever seen the episode of Critical Role where uh, Chris Perkins is actually in it and he plays a kobold? Yes. <laughs> with You're that, dead. With the... In. With the, the, the... with the scorpion on a stick in the bee cage. <laughs> <laughs> Spurt, right? Spurt. And the, Spurt, the, yeah. the fire giant is like squishing me. Like, no! <laughs> he was in the campaign for literally like 20 minutes. That was great. The days. How long, yeah, how long have you been down here for? Three days. How long have you been alive? Three days. <laughs> How long do kobolds usually live? Eleven days. <laughs> I, re I remember. I remember that Laura Bailey was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> like, he's near death." Um, I'll probably also like set up a little. If they if they have a full leader, I'm gonna try to give them their own section of the ship, where I'm just gonna bring in foliage. I'm gonna bring in. I'm gonna build them like an open terrarium style corner of the ship below deck. If you'd like, like, this is your area. If you'd like, they would actually like to show you uh, the types of environments they would prefer to, to have and the types of things they'd like to take with them on the ship. Yes, by all means, lead the way. All right. Bugs have possessions? They, they will Can lead I... the way. They do all split in different directions. So you kind of have to like, oh, yep, I, well, I, I no, got you no. over there. And... Stay together. Can I wild shape into um, a frog? Yes, and yes, I'm going to okay. follow them as a frog. Okay. Just so we're all about... Code, dude. We're on the same. It's I okay. A, I, I I'm love not a the a image of this like leader scorpion with the centipedes and the others just like trudging the way with you like hopping <laughs> steps behind them and like taking little frog notes. <laughs> you guys are doing such cute shit. I can't draw all of this, but I really want to. <laughs> I, I I love giving a uh, Wayne cannon fodder. It's so cute. Kish Everything. Tosh. That's sick. I love that. Here in the workshop, Amy, you're not sure you've ever seen such a chaotic affair. And literally everything I'm telling Amy, you can see for yourself as you sneak in with her. My only question is, do you let Amy know that you're going invisible with her? Would I, ha would I have had an opportunity to do so? Because if they walk straight off, then if, if I could tell her subtly, then yes. They However, walked straight off. Amy, then I wouldn't Amy have am I wrong? You, you were kind of caught up in the moment, yes or no? 
Yeah, yeah. Then Amy would not know that I'm with her if I wouldn't have had a chance to, like, slip her that information without him knowing. I love the dynamic of an That's invisible Lur Amy doesn't even know that, that uh, LaRue's there. You even barely squeak into the door as it closes behind you. Inside, there's very strange music playing. Think of, like, uh, the soundtrack to Courage the Cowardly Dog. Ooh. Yeah, very a lot of, like, very old-timey. There's this, like, strange record player. You, you, you as, like, us normal people recognize as a record player, but to you, this is... You've never even seen something like this before. It's a strange tube with this disc spinning around in, like, an oblong circle, and it's just, like, got this, like, old-timey country music playing. It's very creepy. Um... Galio, while this is happening currently, you look into another little mushroom house, and you can see that there are eight bunk beds all crammed in right next to each other with one small table in between, and there's chains on each bunk bed. Going to the next house. Fair enough. Amy. LaRue. Amy, specifically, as LaRue has made her way in invisible. Dr. McBoyle begins taking you through an assortment of all his, what he considers genius inventions. He's got this crazy contraption that can sharpen a pencil without you having to turn anything. He's got another one that's a belt that you can tighten it as tight as you want. You can also loosen it. It's incredible. But he says, most specifically, he wants to know, Amy, do you understand the true power that Hextech Crafting can give us, the, the things we can really accomplish through Hextech Crafting, the, the, the magic we can achieve, the, the power. Do you understand, Amy? Tell me you understand. I believe I do because it is the power of Hextech, which is literally the spark of life inside of me. The spark of life. The spark, the spark, and as he says, the spark, the record skips, er, and there's a brief moment of utter silence as his eyes are wide. That's right. The spark of life, or the control of it. Look around you. Look around. How beautiful is my utopia? Tell me it's beautiful. It's, uh... Indeed, quite beautiful in a technological way. Yes, of course it is. I created it. I, me, Dr. Yatesy McBoyle. His eyes are getting wise, really opening up to you here, Amy. He, let's change the music a little bit. Something a little bit more fun. And he turns on what would be the Runeterra equivalent of Lady Gaga. Very upbeat European pop sounding record. It's extremely inappropriate given the current situation. He takes you up. Well, I actually asked him if he could explain the uh, the principles on which the device operates. Quickly. Yes. Yes. Of course. You're, you're a like mind. You're someone you understand. You understand. It's simple. <laughs> 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 it's so simple and he takes you and up here he's got a hex tech wheel almost like a wheel of fortune <laughs> and it's got 30 prongs each of them with their own little light bulb he says every time one of them misbehaves all I have to do is spin this wheel that's all I have to do I spin the wheel and one of them gets the punishment. It's that simple. It's genius. So, does it punish the specific one that misbehaved? Of course not. Or does not. it punish a random one? These little monkeys don't know the difference. They're self-reliant. They'll accept the punishment, but if it happens to his grandmother or her ex-boyfriend, well, heavens. They'll do whatever you say. Oh, so it's uh, not really like Pavlov's thinking with the reward and punishment, but it's sort of a uh, more societal approach for control. That's right. It's literally the direct in-between comparison between Pavlov and the monkey experiment where one of them got shocked and didn't go up the ladder, and then all the ones coming in also wouldn't go up the ladder. Under my control. I can do whatever, whatever I say. I'm a... I'm a god here. 
You understand that. Well, I understand that you're the head researcher of a rather large social experience, but I gotta tell you, I've been around a couple gods, and spoken them to directly, helped one build something, and I'm afraid you're probably still a little short of God. Shh, shh, shh. You don't understand. I have the power I'm trying to. to. I'll tell you. I'll tell you! And he throws his hair back. His mustache almost even waves with it. <laughs> I have the power to level this whole village. This whole island. The entire thing is laced with hex tech explosives. You're familiar. Of course you're familiar. <laughs> yeah, you, uh... Did you actually engineer yourself some way to survive such an explosion? Of course not. I don't need to. I would survive due to my superior physical prowess. <laughs> Naturally, there's one bomb safe shelter on the island where I would sit and press the detonate button. You understand that, right? Yeah, I assume you were wise enough to make sure that the wise. only detonation button was in that shelter, right? Of course I was wise enough for that. And none of these uh, yordles are going to be smart enough to figure out the uh, transmission or cable line or whatever you use to, to s disable your uh, button, are they? Those little cretins can barely tie their own shoes. Well, to be fair, I pause right don't there. Really want... Because back outside in the normal world, Ezra, you're having a conversation with a little Yordo yourself, aren't you? I was. And she's dragging her cigarette. She offers you a pull of her. Uh, <clears throat> she's got like toilet wine and a uh, little um, what's it called? Not canteen. mushroom. Not canteen. A mushroom. A mushroom. Yeah, okay. It's fine. a mushroom. She's got a toilet mushroom wine. Cap cup. She's got toilet wine and a mushroom cap, and she's like, it's good shit. And I grab my uh, Viking horn from the Frege Lord tourist shop, and I uh, offer her that. All right. Okay, you are, you're cool. All right. All right, you're cool. <clears throat> the the Passover well, has officially strong. been appeased. She looks, she looks to you, she goes, I need your help taking down the fucking the doctor. Mm hmm. And I look at her and I my beard. The doctor? Yeah. You know the one. The one that isn't a little blue person. I mean and I even look around suspicious the tall one. <laughs> she's she's like, that's him. That's that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. I knew it when I seen it. Dastardly. Is it? Look, he puts on a really good appearance. Alright? Barely. He's got everyone under Hardly. his control. He's a fucking slave driver. But he's incredibly powerful. I've seen his diary. I've snuck in. I've seen all of his notes. He plans, if anything, if anyone ever challenged his power or his prowess on this island, if he ever got the slightest idea... That he wasn't the one in charge. It, it wasn't feeding into his his god complex. He's just gonna bomb the whole thing. We're all fucking dead. He's gonna bomb the whole thing. The whole thing. She she looks down and she pulls up some fake grass, and you can see that under it there's like this long trip wire. Oh. Just, this is all over everything. We are in a very dangerous place. Okay. At that point, Ezra is suddenly very concerned for the rest of the bugaboos because this is clearly not somewhere we want to. Um, and I look at her, back at the little Yordo, and I'm gonna say, "What are we doing? What do we need to do? What's going on?" We have to kill the tall one. You can trust me. She gives you a wink with her good eye. The good eye that's not under an eye patch. Ezra takes a pull of a cigarette. And returns the wink right back. <laughs> Ding! Get your, get your crew. 
we need to set a trap. You don't want to fight him in his lair. He's got traps and contraptions and golems. We'd all die. Okay. Uh oh. Sneak around and pull him out is what it sounded like. Lure him out. We. She looks around. She goes, uh, one of the yordles is drowning. And he's the only one that can save her. You have to feed to his ego. He's the only one that can save her. He can't... I can't be involved. I'm supposed to be over there helping on the ship. You have to get him out of the workshop. You have to finish it out here. Don't let him get in there. He'll kill all of us. He has that power. One last question. What is he most proud of? She looks around this... I think we can make some. And she also pulls up her sleeve on the cloak, and there's a barcode on her wrist. And she goes, and this. That point, what's that? What does it look like? Looks like a bunch of bars. This is a receipt. I'm sorry. This made me property. What the? Her typically tough d d uh, demeanor diminishes just a little bit as she sniffles and she says, you have to stop this fucking man. Please help. I've risked everything to come here and tell you this. At that point, Ezra cannot deny the call to action. It will help. Fair enough. Galio. At your next house which is I should be telling you which one of the which ones these are you're you're investigating all these houses this one here where I'm moving you around is where you saw the hanging uh, yordle to the left here was where you saw the eight bunk beds and the chains in the one table as you made your way up you do notice that there's one normal looking building and another mushroom house in this one you can see this like 12 foot tall suit of armor that just stands completely by itself it's like kind of covered by a sheet but not really you can see exactly what it is it looks like this like uh think of like full metal alchemist you know think of al that type of like hex tech suit of armor big crystal in the back and it's got this like really long morning star and it just stands completely silently and stoically, as if it's powered off. Can I investigate the building? Uh, Actually, yeah, I want but to you wouldn't learn any more than I already gave you, to be quite honest. It's, it's a, like, other than that, it's another of these, like, mushroom buildings. There's one door, two windows. That's what you can see inside. There also is an entire, like, as you go around to the other window, you can see that there's, like, a complete, like, armament and arsenal behind it. There's, like, swords and bows and guns it, it almost appears like its own like its own little armory and then after i see that i just want to see the building to the right of it and right above it and those would be the last two well, i investigate we'll get to that in a second because we've got a frog hopping around i'll miss like you for the future senor frog what senor do we, what do we, i already forgot what i called this scorpion Ish frog speaks spanish see si. ishpas his sauce Hishtash. Uh, it's Hishtash. Hishtash. Hishtash Hishtak? has valiantly um, volunteered to go last. He says as long as his people make it onto your ship and away to freedom, he doesn't care. He would live on a piece of cheese if it meant a better life for he and his cohorts. Who would not live on a piece of cheese? The scorpion, now that you're his size, you notice also has a small little three musketeers mustache. Wow! Yeah. Hishtosh, I love this guy. It's yeah, groomed. It's <laughs> <He's> groomed. He's <laughs> got a little comb on his stinger. And he takes you, and at this point you've seen it doesn't take that long to see all of the types of dirt that they like, and if we're being honest, it was all the same type of dirt. They just... <laughs> but you do know that Hishtosh wanted to make sure that all of his people were represented, and he let each of them speak. At this point, he crosses his claws and sits up about as well as he can. Says, and where to next? Or the wind calls. He looks up 
and there's not really any wind today. This is all right. How about after that? The earth and the trees often have an opinion in the matter. I listen to them. All right. We have others with us as well. They often call us where we need to be. We're going to speak with some plants with our staff ability. And uh, a couple of these trees are a little bit shy, you can tell. But the one that you were just under is a real nice old female pine. <laughs> and she said, <laughs> I hope I can do this. <laughs> she goes, you oh, got it. Oh, sure. What? <laughs> You got this. If anybody can be a female tree, it's you. Oh, sure. And what can I do for there, you fine little sweetie? Not much right now, ma'am. We're just waiting for our ship to get repaired. So I hope you don't mind us using wood probably taken from your family. And such a polite little frog, if aren't you? If I didn't know better, I'd think you're a wood nymph. <laughs> Not a nymph, but a wood a wood thing. You'd That's be right. close. You, you can have some branches, dearie. Believe me, they grow on trees. <laughs> He's got a sense of humor. If oh, we keep sure. meeting trees like this, we will never lose our way. Don't you worry. Careful with those pine trees. You'll find yourself in a sticky situation. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with all the sap. That one didn't land. I'm sorry. I, I, I've been working on my comedy. It's very... Uh, I'm on pins and needles. Oh, wait. <laughs> sorry. And what can I do for you then? Um, well, I mean, have you heard anything about... I mean, what do you... Is anything... Any intel? Have you heard? <laughs> What's the gossip well, among the trees on this island? What? What's the hopping? What's, What's the hot goss? I hear the, there's yeah. a maple seed made its way onto the island, and that's really <laughs> pissing off the oaks. <laughs> oh, maples are invasive, but invasive, oaks should be fine. It, 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 believe me. Believe me. They have a word where, to say behind your back. Where is this maple seed? It's just Do you know? up there on the top of the island there next to that crazy uh, professor guy that wants to kill everybody. Sorry. What? What's that? I'll remember to enunciate this time. I said it's just up there next to the crazy professor man who wants to kill everybody. See, that's what I thought you said. Yeah, okay. Um, Oh sure. The, he what? <laughs> how do you know he wants to kill everybody? I'm a tree. Well, that makes <laughs> sense. But but more specifically, has he done anything that has led you to believe that well, trees are very good judging of character? But of course, of course. And you want something a little bit more objective? Well, I'm just a frog, you see. Shirley said. <laughs> Charlie said that Pinella said that Hazel said that they saw him building bombs, torturing them, um, forcing one of them to commit suicide in front of others, and also he sexually harassed the little one with the with the cigarettes. And that was on a Tuesday. Okay. After we sort out this maple me. tree, after we sort out this maple tree <laughs> issue, we will look into. What is going on that there? Come on, folks. Priorities. Um, and I'm going to start hopping up towards the professor's right. professor's house just to take a look Hop with my entourage. Up. You, The frog and the entourage are on their way up toward the professor's house, which is... I'm going to try and get... Do I see anyone on the way, too? Because if I do, I'll try to get uh, their attention. Yeah, Galio is standing here next to this house. All right. Um, I'm going to have will... to cut you off for what's happening okay. inside the house right now. Great. Go for it. All right. Inside the house, Amy. Invisible Luru. I brought you up a little bit closer. I figured you'd want to be up there a little bit closer. Amy, um, Dr. Yatesy McBoyle was just explaining to you how he essentially keeps the Yordle population on his island in check by torturing them. With his Hexet creations. Yeah, I, 
I have a 19 intelligence, so I grokked the situation. I'm glad. To which I was going to say, <clears throat> well, so I see you've managed to come up with a relatively competent way of coercing a smaller, smallish number of people, but you know, for your to really show your godhood, I think you're gonna have to go a little bit more and better and I I think I may have what you need. I just haven't been able to be smart enough to figure out how to make it function if if you're willing to listen to my hypothesis and my ideas. Of idea course. Here. A student of the Hextech Arts, someone coming to me to beg for my attention, for my tutelage? <laughs> Show me whatever this meager contraption is. I'm sure I can figure it out for you in moments. Well, so I start with, uh, I pull out my, uh, my life-saving figurine of me. And I explain to him that, so, this hammer here I actually got from a, uh, D.D. Orn the Maker up in the Freylord area, and it, among powers I haven't unlocked, it has the power of life. I then went from there to these models of ourselves, and if you have, you can probably detect the Hextech bit in it, and then I was able to infuse that and infuse life power from the hammer to basically put a life force in this doll now you obvious i'm assuming that you're aware of and capable of building a golem type creature so where i'm going with this is in back in my workshop on my ship i was working on essentially creating more things somewhat similar to me sentient golem like beings but you know without the uh freedom of of thought you know the the perfect followers of course however i just have not been able to figure out how to fuse the fuse the two magics i don't know if i'm short on hextech crystal hectech i don't know so what I'm thinking is, if, if what I'm working on works, rather than, I don't know, 20 or 30 of these little Yordle guys, you could have, eventually, with raw materials, 50, 100, 1,000, 10,000 dedicated followers helping you with your research, getting whatever you need, etc. But, I mean, if you're willing to come out and help me figure this out and bring it to life, yeah, I'd be more than happy to assign it to you and and help you learn you know what i was doing and I, and then of course i would be benefiting from all your knowledge you would be sharing with me and making this function yes yes of of course please um yes uh you can see he's taking it back eyes real big pupils constricted he's he's very hot focus on this uh please let's uh, show me it to, do, could you show it to, to me right away right this second yeah yeah we can go right over to my workshop and i mean we can work there or we can take stuff out and bring it back here if you prefer after you take a look at what i got set up all right larue you're gonna get this for free but amy roll me a perception it's gonna be i don't know remember what my bonus is but it's gonna be less than nine considering okay. what i rolled and it's under your it's well under your passive then all right larue as you follow these two out amy in the lead him behind you can see that he pulls some sort of contraption out of his pocket it almost looks like a hannah montana microphone the purple one with like the disco ball on top and there's a slight beep as he compresses it and slides it back into his pocket on his way out. We'll head over to Sylvan, Galio, and Ezra. On your way out here. On their way out here. 
Sylvan Galio and Ezra. Galio, currently a frog, a scorpion, 10 centipedes, and what else? Sylvan? A spider. And a spider. Two spiders, right? We can't you muted, muted himself. Yeah, you muted yourself. <laughs> Three spiders. Three spiders. Three spiders. Have come up and, and all led by the scorpion just sort of sit almost obediently in front of you. I'm just going to look down because I've never seen a scorpion, a spider, or a centipede, or a frog in my entire life. I come from a frozen <laughs> okay, fucking okay, kingdom. Like, literally, you've spent enough time elsewhere in the world that you have seen all of these things. They're not abnormal. You're in the uh, desert for And a even minute. if so, you are familiar with these things. They're just not white and, like, snowy. <laughs> okay. Well, in the desert for, like, two months. Yeah. Um... Well, as you're staring down, the uh, frog is going to begin to grow, and very swiftly, Sylvan is just going to form up into like your ear and whisper, um, something's not right. The trees tell me this professor is more dangerous than we were led to believe. I'm going to whisper back, I'm like, can you please never do that to me ever again? <laughs> Um, but not losing any distance like I have no idea what you're talking about but I can do my best um, and, I, and I hope the uh, the insects can just crawl up my legs at this point and they'll they can perch wherever they like scorpion left shoulder cool next to the hawk on your right and if Kept some of the centipedes want to kind of explore up onto Galio's body I'd allow it All right. what's Pepe LaRue doing as Sylvan's up in my face. Pepe LaRue would like to ride the scorpion. Ride the scorpion? How big is this scorpion? It's a big scorpion. It's a little, it's a little scorpion. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, a, big... a decent sized scorpion. Katila is a little how, less than a foot tall. How how big is this? How big? This is a little eight scorpion. Inch, eight inch scorpion? Think of like a GameCube controller. It's a big ass scorpion. <laughs> You can All eat right. those, you know. I'm just, cool with that. Just saying. All you right, Hishtosh. Like you could eat it. Hishtosh is. I mean, the he is the. He is the leader he is the of king. the arthropods of of mushroom yordle isle. Of course, he's gonna be big. He's the scorpion king. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and Larue is here as well. No, my friend. Oh. This is just Galio. Petite However, Larue's. as the two of you begin to converse and get covered in bugs, you can look behind and see that uh, Senor Ezra, Captain Black himself is making his way toward you from behind this auspicious building for some reason. <laughs> okay. Bugaboos. Bugaboos. Come here. Uh, change of plans. Uh, number one, we're going to lure and we're going to pull this guy, the tall guy, the tall one. Remember the tall one? Out of the fucking head building. And then two. We are going to. Uh, restrain him. And give him a solid thrashing. Before we do that. Ezra you should know he is evil. How close is he? Is he that far from us? Or is he up next to us? I need you guys. To, these you guys have not left the building. Are you talking about Ezra? Yes. Okay, I need to start shrinking you guys down a bit for battle map stuff, but uh, yeah, Ezra is like across th these these two mushroom houses. Ezra's across the way, so he's roughly five, ten, fifteen, twelve, thirty feet away. Did I hear any of what he just said? Yeah, you heard everything. He was saying it to you guys. <laughs> oh, I don't know if he was yelling it or whispering it. E either way, it was to both of you, and you're standing like on top of each other at this point. Well, I still uh, want to investigate the house to the right. Ah. Well, as you come over here to investigate the house on the right, the door explodes open at you. Roll a dexterity sec. Roll a dexterity saving throw. Ezra, Sylvan, roll me initiative. Dexterity, you say? That's that a went. whopping Woo. 13. 9. 21. You guys know how I, I do. I don't need to hear all the rolls off the bat. Uh, LaRue, Amy, you can feel <laughs> to roll it as well. You'll enter the fray uh, after this first Did you round. say LaRue roll too? Yep, LaRue, Amy, you guys can go ahead and roll so I can just fit you on it instead of asking you to roll it again when the time comes up. Oh, terrible. 25 to 20? Oh my god. Is it just Ezra at 21? 
Yeah, 21. Ezra, I think this is the first time you've ever been on top of the initiative. It is. It's weird. I don't know yeah. what to do. Very strange. Wait. All right. So, 20 to 15? Oh, hold on. Did you want me to just roll dexterity and initiative or dexterity just dexterity? Dexterity and initiative. Uh, sorry, I'm going to take that spot. I got 23. What's the dexterity saving throw? 17 plus 6 for my initiative and my dexterity saving throw was a 13. 13. Oh, no. But I got a 23 on the initiative. I heard you, but it doesn't matter. You got knocked down by the door flying open. <laughs> But my initiative. Because <laughs> 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 this giant golem thing came flying out the door at you. Oops. Let's make this a little bit smaller, just so that these add up. I didn't do that. Whatever, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right. It'll be fine. Oi! Long story short, Galio, this giant contraption almost identical to the one that you saw in the other house through this door open with this giant like morning star hand and it knocked you over you will start your next round um, prone knocked down all right uh sorry 15 to 10 no one all right 10 to 5 9 10. <laughs> well, what was uh LaRue? Seven. Alright, and Amy? I rolled a three. Amy. Amy's a seven, too. Okay. <laughs> this was not the one to roll poorly on, but here we are. Those are Ezra rolls. Rolled a three. Rue, followed by a uh, Sylvan Wings, your dex mod? Three. And Amy? Four plus four. All right, Amy will be ahead of Sylvan on those uh, on those two. No, Sylvan got a nine. I was the other seven. Okay, Rue, you're also four. You're also plus four, right? I am. All right, we're just gonna put my Rue initiatives ahead. plus. Yeah, yeah, that's my deck. We're, we're just yeah. gonna put Rue ahead. Sylvan, Rue, Amy. All right, that door comes crashing open. Sylvan. I also need an dexterity save to throw, as yours does as well. Whoa, from from the one at the top right, top left here. Oh, that one also. Yep. I see. I see. Yep, both of them. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. One A one. There we go. That's the roll we're looking for. We're actually only looking for a uh, like fourteen. Uh, yes, you're able to expertly dodge out of the, seeing like basically one door comes crashing open and knocks Galio on his ass. And so then you had the um, thought to say, I'm not sure if I know, but I have an idea and step out of the way as yours also comes flying open. And this giant 12 foot tall piece of uh, living armor is standing in front of you with a f two flails for hands, two big morning stars for hands. Oh, geez. Indeed. Stick with me, little ones. I'll show you how we do this. <laughs> All right. At the top of the round, which is unfortunate for me because I was hoping you would stay prone for a little bit, is Galio, who is prone. Um. Well, can I obviously want to stand up immediately, which right. is my only action. That's half your movement. Okay, it's half my movement. Cool. Well, I'm going to stand up. All right. And obviously this thing just crashed into me. I'm going to take... My great sword and uh just hack at it. Alright, send it. My ice <laughs> my ice one. A true ice. And basically for uh LaRue and Amy, the surprise round is where this is all taking place, and then on the next one you guys are basically walking right out the front door. Okay. Oh, no. well, 21? twenty one hits. Oh, I didn't say my hit. I heard twenty one. I did not. Okay. But a 17 well, plus 6 is a 23. Okay. Even better. Uh, oh, where are my D6s? Found them. 5, 11 with the first hit. And then I'm sure a 15 is not going to hit. 
A 15, unfortunately, does not hit, but I do appreciate your honesty. And it's not that it doesn't hit. It's not that Galio missed. It's that this thing is made of metal armor, and your second slice coming through, even with your sort of true ice, you kind of ping, shot off the top as it parries away from you. With its giant, like, it's got this giant maul, this big cudgel covered in spikes, like a giant mm. butcher hammer. Mm. Uh, and also, can you turn on some battle music, my friend, please? Yeah, I got. I, all I gotta do is hit next. All right, uh, that will bring us to Ezra. Alrighty. Um, after seeing that golem construct thing bust out of that house that Galio's been whacking at, true. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot out a second level shatter. Okay. Um, which states that. A creature made of inorganic material such as stone, crystal, or metal has disadvantage on the saving throw. All right. Oh. And it's a constitution 14. Well, that's this. On a big, hot, natural 2, you'll get full damage Fire. on this. Go. Go 3d8. Come on, baby. What a hit. Um, 11. 11 points of damage yeah. on a yep. second level yep and then with my bonus oh. action i want to get throw galio the little bardic inspo little bardic inspiration for galio we love to see that i know you did it on D, D beyond did it did it automatically do it from first or second level um so a creature shatter. takes 3d8 damage 3d8 on a failed save if you did it at level two this should be like 48 increases by 1d8 for each spell slot above second. So at second level, 48. It should be it should be 3d8. Okay, then yeah, that's what I rolled in love. Okay, it was it was just it was a line. it was a poor roll. There was a maximum output yeah. of 8, 16, 24, and we just unfortunately went low. But that makes more sense. Okay. And then that'll uh, I think yeah, that'll be my turn. All right, Galio. This, me. this big machine is going to make its giant cudgel attack back at you. It's got this giant butcher hammer. I'm trying to think of a hilarious cartoon hammer, one that's like so ridiculously oversized. Like It's just like it's as big as the person wielding it. You know, It's ridiculous to think that any one person could ever have the strength to carry such a thing, which is part of why it's a construct. And it's going to make two attacks on you, my friend, as it just attempts to slam. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> All right, first attack is going to be a uh, mod 19. No. All right. Woo! And the second is mod 22. Yes. Right. So 12. So 11 plus 6 is 17 points Bring of it bludgeoning damage as it's attempting to just crush. You almost feel some of your armor, like, cave in as it slams into your shoulder on its second strike. All right. Bring it on. The second golem will get its move, and it moves in front of you, Sylvan. Mm. It with its two morning star hands. <laughs> it's ridiculous for me to say. We'll make two attacks as well. One with each of its morning star hands. All right. That's a mod twenty-four and a mod fifteen. Uh, the twenty-four will hit. Okay. For 13 crushing. Ouch. Okay. All right. And that'll bring us on down to Amy LaRue and Dr. McBoyle. All making it out. You're greeted by an interesting sight. Amy and the doc have came out together. LaRue directly behind them to find that your friends are here fighting two giant constructs. Dr. McBoyle shouts, Ha! Egads! Already? And turns to you, Amy. You betray me? Your god? And he's going to take his turn. And he's going to cast Thunder Wave. Everybody within five feet, please make a, what is it? Constitution saving throw? I think so, yeah. Con fort, yeah, con 
I want to say it's Khan. It is Khan. Yep, I'm looking at it. Yep. Yeah, it's Khan. All right, everyone within five feet. Uh, Lou, were you following closely or back? My goal, because I saw him hit that button, and I was thinking in my head, like, what LaRue would do in that moment. Okay. And I would think that he just, like, alarmed the building, like, he didn't want people to, like, leave the building. So, honestly, I was trying to think of a way to stop the door from fully shutting without him knowing that. And that means, if I was trying to do that, I probably was following closely behind them. Okay. So, if he cast it right at the door then yes if he cast it five feet from the door then no. no that's as you guys were walking like we we are just walked out on the steps and saw it so i appreciate your honesty it'll be a con 17 save from both of you my friends i Ooh. rolled a 17 plus two 19 Ooh. makes Ooh. i i only made it up to 15 so i'll take full effect and get it'll pushed. Be full damage that's not a she to the eight thunder as he shouts, and what is this? And he claps his wrists together. I, I want I want to add, this is the Thunder Wave spell, yes. And these two, like, brass knuckles, like, arc with electric lightning and shocks everything within five feet. Um, that is nine electric damage or thunder damage to you, Amy. All right, here. I forgot, is it save for half or save for all? Uh, Four if they for save, me. you take half. So four for me? Four for you indeed. Each creature to 15 foot originating from you must make a con saving throw on a field save. Thanks. And it's pushed 10 feet. Amy, you are pushed 10 feet into this building. You, you, you feel your back like pff, hit on this building and something shakes and rattles inside. LaRue, you're forced back into the building and the door closes. Wait, even if I succeed, I still get pushed back? Oh, no, 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 no. I forgot that you I forgot that you made the save. My apologies. That was going to be a cool mechanic that I don't get to do anymore. No, you just take that. You get That's zapped good, a little bit. Already in my head, I was like, shit, I let you used all my level twos. I don't have Misty Step anymore. <laughs> yeah, get zapped a little yep. bit. That brings us to Sylvan. All right. Oh, okay. So there's two golems out. I don't see the other one on the uh, battle map. Oh, that's it. Okay, sorry. Things are kind of blurry for me. Um, is this one accessible on all sides, or is it blocked by the one they're, next to me? Or is it both blocked? standing uh, backs to doorway? Okay. Well, I'm going to attempt to distract them a little bit, and uh, I'm going to call out to the Fey and cast Conjure Animals. And I'm going to summon, it allows me to summon um, eight wolves. I hate this spell. <laughs> I, like, and any DMs out there, you're lying if you say you don't hate when your players use this spell. Dave, is that true? I wasn't paying attention what spells are using. Conjure animals. Uh, it, well, once you get higher level, the animals aren't that terribly dangerous i'm talking but... about from rolling initiative perspective they all have they I, apparently i roll for them as a group yeah you got like a pack and i'm oh, gonna no. try from the blue sage Five. i'm gonna send four to this one and four to the other golem thick At least we have Discord to roll the thing, so you're not just going to sit there and roll, like, a bunch of attacks and roll. You can roll, like, True. slash, you know, exclamation point, roll 8d20, and that tells, like, they all have the same mod, so it's really easy to calculate hits. When you're not doing that, it gets really annoying. One, two, three, four, five. You said four to one and three to the other? Four to both. That's right, because that's math. Fuck science. All right. <laughs> and Fuck you, science. as Sylvan is diving, ducking, dipping, diving, and dodging, this it's basically, Sylvan, it's two uh, Morningstar hands don't attack you specifically. They're sort of like really fast. Ooh. Um, I rolled a 15 for their initiative. Okay. Okay. 
they will come up. They're on my. Paper. All right, and I'll just command them to both attack their uh, targets. And right. then, um, am I within range for an attack of opportunity, or can I try to duck away? No, something has to move out of your space for an attack of opportunity. No, if I flee, will I trigger an attack of opportunity from where oh, I am? from now? it? Yeah. You're asking me if you left its space. Am I within be... its... It, am I with... Everything's really blurry, so am I still within its range? Yeah. It's just all I'm... Okay. Do you have mobile? Do you have mobile? Mobile feet? I do, but I, I haven't attacked yet, so I don't think uh, it, okay. it works. Um, so I think that is my full turn. All bonus action, I'll turn into a giant elk. All right. And that'll be it. Sylvan is going to become the elk. What did I have to type last time? Was it moose that got me to the right idea? Was it deer? I think. Moose, yep. Right. Iron Moose. What was his name? Moosey. It was like William or Steve. Steven. 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 Steven, yeah. Steven, and there Good is time. now a giant elk faced head to head with this double flailing flail thing. Uh, Rue followed by Amy. All right. I am going to. Go ahead and stab Yatesy now, with the. Uh, Welcome to a house roll you've never been introduced to. You ready? This is you are invisible behind a target and stabbing. I want you to roll D100 on 96 to 100. You will get an assassination. <gasps> Fun. Um, roll 1d100, 45. 45. <laughs> Unfortunately, not the, the straight up assassination. Go ahead and roll big damages. You've got sneak attack. You got everything. Cool. Um, okay. That is going to be. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Where is my d8? Roll add advantage on this attack, by the way. is let's see i rolled where's my plus to rapier uh i rolled a 24 to hit 24 will hit and damage is gonna be six plus how many d6s do i get shit ton four D6, so six plus. All right, that is 12, 16, 21, 22, 22 points of damage. Points. And I am now visible. You are now visible. And the rest of the party watches as this guy, this professor, this doctor, walks out, casts a magical lightning spell of some kind that throws Amy across the room. Begins to shout with victory, and a blade comes <laughs> spewing through his stomach, and he coughs up blood a little bit, and LaRue appears directly behind him, holding the blade. Bonus! I'm going to stab him again, because I can do that with a rapier. That's right. Because it's Holy a finesse shit. weapon. Do you have a, you have a second yeah. finesse weapon equipped? I have two rapiers. One is a plus one, and one is a regular. Okay. So I'm hitting with the regular now. Yes, as long as long as that it's was... a second weapon. The, the the one stipulation is you don't um you can't Yeah, I'm hitting him with my regular one now. Same weapon twice. Um that is a natural 19 um plus like 7 or something. Um and my regular rapier without sneak attack damage is 1d8 plus 4 instead of plus 5. Oh, where'd my d8 go? points of damage <laughs> and then okay so stab again six points of damage now i'm gonna go ahead and back off and i know that he can take an opportunity attack if he wants to but i'm gonna go up kind of towards where amy is all right you're gonna duck dive dick and dodge and like one more step back i'm kind of ducking between the houses now just kind of like i'm running <laughs> gotcha <laughs> 
Stab and run. All right, Amy, that brings us to you. You've just been blown back by electrical magic energy into a house. And you <laughs> catch breath in your artificial lungs. You might right. even be pissed. Yeah, I, I say, uh, uh, so nice little trick. Let me show you one of mine. <laughs> and I sketch out uh, in the air my cannon. And so my action is creating my arcane cannon, and then it takes solid form, and with my bonus action, I shoot him with it. <laughs> shoot it away. For a total attack of 17. Ooh, 17 hits on the man. All right, I think I do. I gotta check my damage real sure. fast. Why you, uh, go ahead and roll all of your damage for this. I'm gonna grab a drink real quick, okay? All right. <laughs> Look at the wagon. I'm just really happy that he dressed the way I drew him in the image today. It really worked out, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, did you notice that it's still sunlight outside at 740? And it's going to be like that till probably the entire time we play? Alaska. Really? Yeah, well, the sun won't go away till probably about 9. At least you don't have to be scared of vampires. Every day, we gain 12 minutes of sunlight. Vampires will never hurt you. Amy, what is the total? 14 points of damage, and I push them 5 feet towards the giant elk. Haha, <laughs> taste of your own medicine, All bitch. Right. <laughs> oh, that actually makes him land on a wolf. I'm going to roll a dexterity save for him not to trip on the wolf. Truly. He, he does make it, so he's essentially standing in between two wolves, an elk, and a golem. Between two wolves and a hard place, am I right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, okay, that was Amy. Amy, will that end your turn? Um. Yeah, I don't see any tactical reason to move, so turn over. Galio, as we're on deck. Okay, since this boy wants to fight, we gonna fight back. Blows for blows. Blows for blows. 14 plus 6 is a 20. Mm. Just hits. Sweet! Just? That was 11 points of damage. And we gonna what? do it again. What did he roll in it? What did it just hit? What did he roll? I hit a 20 and it just hit. And it just Oh, no. We going again! At level oh, 7, you guys just... all have, like, 6 plus on anything you do for mods, by the way. Most of your spell attack modifiers are, like, plus 7 by now. Mine's plus 6. Like I said, 6 plus. Oh, I've been reading my initiative. I have a plus 9 on my greatsword. Oh, damn. I've been doing this wrong this whole time. That's why I use D&D Beyond right. and let the computer rule. The fact, the fact that you said the wrong thing and then said I have a plus nine for your, you said I, initiative something something great sword plus nine. Those three things don't connect. My initiative is plus six. I just looked at my great sword and it says a plus nine for hit dice. Hang, nice. Oh, okay. so weapons also don't have hit dice. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me let me take a look at your stuff here real quick. Well, when I roll on D on um, on here, it says I just rolled a nineteen plus nine, which gave me a twenty-eight. Nice. On D and D Beyond, D and D Beyond doesn't lie. Right. It never does. That's true. Galio has a strength of nineteen, which is plus four. He's got. A I can see it. Yeah, he rolled a twenty-eight. Yeah. He's got a proficiency bonus of three, which would add the to to total of plus seven. It's a plus two weapon, which adds up to plus nine. I want everyone to understand why that's the case. We're at the point game where, log. We're at the point where we're running into plus two weapons. All of us that are level seven plus will have a proficiency bonus plus three. Our main stat has being strength are probably in the eighteens or nineteens, which will give us plus four. So yes, he does have a plus nine to hit with the great sword. Marcus, I'm mostly explaining that to you so that you can use the right terminology here. You have a plus nine to hit because you have a plus two weapon. Your strength is plus four, proficiency plus three. That's great because sixteen plus nine makes twenty five. Yes, it does. That is. I know math. That's the long story. <laughs> That's the long story short here. Three plus six is nine plus a thunderous might. Uh, send it. 
Let me read what it is again. Which dice it is. It knocks them prone, don't forget. Thunder Smite is 2d6s. Which is a 7. Your weapon rings with Thunder Blah Blah. blah three. Extra it's audible within 300 feet of you and the attack is. Blah, blah, blah. Additionally, if the target is a creature, not if it's anything, if it's a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed 10 feet away and knocked from. Yep. Well, I should have thunder smite. This, however, is a construct. Regardless of that, all of you hear the bell chime bing, as lightning shoots out of Galio's frost sword and uh, sort of like static shock conjoining with, I don't know, someone that has electric or someone that has ice power. So static shock and frozone cuts the golem in half and the cudgel goes flying up into the mushroom, toppling the entire mushroom and shaking the ground behind it. Oh, Cute. damn. That golem is no more. Uh, that with my it. movement, okay. can I still move? Yeah. With my movement, I'm going to go next to the other golem in between or on here's the elk here's evil guy and i'm gonna be right next to the evil guy kind of making a flank while Perfect. also i'm in range for to the, golem. the golem there's only one place you can stand which is the only place that isn't taken up by wolves evil guys giant elks or buildings as close as i can get yeah no, I, without I got touching you, i've got you in ring in in a range of the golem as was the evil guy you just wouldn't be able to create a flank unless you did a perfect flank um you could you could create a perfect flank potentially with eh, actually fuck it man it's a giant elk it takes up more space yeah well, you got a perfect flank with sylvan um and wolves cool. and you're in range of both the golem and uh <laughs> but you are now um, out of actions and bonus actions okay i do have a question though spells cost actions right that depends what on the make spell. sure Oh, I was going so to do... So, for instance, Thunderous Smite is a bonus action. You attacked, which yep. was your action, and you've moved, which is your move action, which is all of them until a reaction comes up. Okay. But uh, for your sake, most Paladin spells will be bonus actions because a lot of it is based on, like, empowering yourself for stuff. So just be, okay. you know, be cognizant of if it's 1A or 1BA or so forth. Let me look at your spells. Uh, that'll bring us to Ezra. All right, I'm going to heck around All right. with, with my 40 feet movement speed. Of course. I want to uh, run towards the evil, the tall, the tall one. Okay. And uh, I want to let off. You can get in melee range all the way up there if yes. you want to. Okay, you're in melee range. And then what I, how much feet movement, movement do I have left That's after that? That's 40 like gets you in feet. front of him. Right, right in front of him? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to heck around. I'm going to add I'm gonna... Ezra. I want to be very clear about this, and it's rare that you're in this situation. This guy is already pretty fucking bloodied in between getting stabbed in the back by LaRue and then Arcane Cannon to the face by Amy. Perfect. I mean, he looks like he's on his last leg and he's about to trip over a wolf. Perfect. <laughs> Easy picking. I'm going to let out a fourth level inflict wound on the boy. Okay. <laughs> I love overkill. Because, because <laughs> nobody hurts my friends. Oh no! For my friends. I rolled a twelve. To hit? Plus? Yeah. I rolled a fucking six plus six. A six plus six? Is literally on the unarmed doctor. Not enough, my friend, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not enough. <laughs> Because okay, okay. as you go to inflict your wounds with your hand, he catches it with his machinist arm and absorbs all of it, taking none of the damage. And now you two are locked, mechanical hand in inflicting wound hand in like a weird arm wrestling. Wolves are barking underneath. Elk horns are shaking. A golem is flailing with its crazy flail arms. Galio is in the fray right next to you, and you're just locked arms, like Star Wars style, in the middle of all... All right, with my bonus action, I want to use my two-weapon fighting with my left hand to shoot out my palm pistol. I, f I love it, because I cannot stress enough, he's like on death's door. <laughs> 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 
right, you're locked here. Roll the attack. Come on, baby. Daddy needs a new parrot. <gasps> I rolled the nat one. <laughs> Did you just? Sh oh God! Ezra, <laughs> you crate right. your pants. All right, all right. Let's get to the f <laughs> let's get to the fumble chart, my friend. Roll a D one hundred. Keep it eleven plus. Nothing bad happens. I I rolled a fifty. Okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> oh my god. And what I thought was going to be the most epic moment of the night, you two were locked, and you... Eyes up, palm pistol right under his neck. It looked perfect. He dodged at the last second. Bullet goes flying up right in between Sylvan's big antlers. The sound of it, all the wolves, whoo, everything. Between the lightning crashing several times and the bullet flying you two are still locked arm in arm but now you're holding a gun and he's got his other hand and he's trying to keep the gun away from his own and it's a forceful and neither of you are that strong so it's kind of even <laughs> as, i have a minus you're... one strength modifier. he's got a minus two <laughs> <laughs> perfect <laughs> all right that brings us to dead golem that's dead followed by dead golem number two it's going to make both of its attacks on you against this time, Sylvan. What is your AC when you're a giant elk? 14. Okay. 11 does not hit you, but I assume that a 25 does. Uh, yep. All right. Ooh, bad rolls. Seven crushing as the flailing arm. One of them catches you in the antler. Okay. Now, not the trophy. I want you to keep in mind, it hits you in the antler pretty hard pieces of ivory went flying. Ow. Keep that in mind, all right? Remind me if I forget. I'm forgetful. That brings us to... I don't to... like when the DM says that. That brings us to Professor Wolf. Mac Boyle. Wolf. Damn it. I need you to roll a better strength than he does as he's trying to get his hand down to touch something on his body. Me? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Hey, Paxton. Oh, no. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I rolled a three. I rolled a 14. He goes oh no! Overpower your other hand, goes to his belt, presses a button, and a hextech explosive explodes in your direction. Roll me a dexterity savings throw. All right, I rolled a nineteen. A nineteen will save. You'll take half damage. You won't be moved as he basically lit off a little incendiary explosive that fired itself into you. What's the damage, Doc? Well, it's it's three it's three d six, but it's gonna be halved whenever I roll here. Uh, three plus six is nine. Plus five is fourteen. Have for seven points as his belt basically explodes, and he looks at you as though he's got the upper hand, like he's got something else up his sleeve. <laughs> his machina hand is still the one grappling your other one, and he's got a really queer look in his eye. Uh-oh. I don't like... Wolves. Wolves. All right, the four wolves on this golem are going to attack it uh, in in unison. So that is... And they all get advantage from pack tactics. Yep. So the first one is a 15 to hit, a 17 to hit, Wait, no, a 15, a 16, a 21, and an 8. They all rolled awfully. Okay, 20 plus for any of them hits. Okay, one of them hits. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is... 
Because it's, it's like, think of awesome. wolves trying to just bite animated armor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I rolled, like, so poorly on all exactly. of this. So I took five <laughs> piercing damage. Five and piercing. It needs, it needs to make a strength save. DC 11. From? From being attacked by a wolf. No, but against what? Oh, it's, uh, if the target is a creature, it must succeed. But it's not a creature, it's not a is creature. it? Yeah. That changes things. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um... Cool. And then the other four wolves um, are going, since that golem is dead, yep. they're going to go on the professor. Oh no. Heaven forbid. Uh, they all have the movement to get to, get to they have, him. They have 40 feet. Yeah. They all have more than enough movement to get to him. He's already roughly on death's door, giving um, Ezra here a crazy look like he's got something up his sleeve. Go ahead and roll to hit for those four. He's got an AC of 13. Okay, all of these hit, and one of them is a nat 20. I want you to stop there. Ezra. As Sylvan's wolves, which you are familiar with, he's brought them to campfires and such. They come, they hang out. It's kind of like Kakashi Sensei bringing his dogs every now and again. You're, you know which ones they are. Oh, I do. As all of Sylvan's wolves come crowding around Dr. McBoyle, you might even return the same look. You realize that all four of them are poised to bite. What distractory measure do you choose to do? Distractionary measure? Yes. Let's let's take a look. Do you headbutt him my... in the face? Do you call him out? What do you how what do you do in this moment where you two are locked in the fray? Call him a bitch. No, I'm gonna go back to the classic Ezra insult that I haven't pulled out in a while. I'm gonna look at him square in his in his face, in his idiotic eyes, and I'm gonna look at him and call him stupid. <laughs> headbutt him right in the dome. As you headbutt him in the nose, blood comes flying. You obviously broke it. Everyone can hear the crunch. You heard the crunch from feet and feet back as Ezra headbutts this man who he was unable to shoot in the face but moments ago not only I guess it is only the four wolves that have surrounded him all begin biting and completely tearing him as asunder just throwing oh, no. pieces of him everywhere eating oh. and howling in triumph so oh, cute good boy <laughs> Gnarly. Well done, wolves. Which actually brings us to Silva. All right, then I'm going to make a ram attack against this golem. All right. It will be at disadvantage because it's up against a wall as you perform it. So it's. What do you mean? Is I thought I had a save against uh, the fall, the knock prone. There, I, I can't do that. If it, it's a cre it's not a creature, so I can't do that oh, anyway. A giant elk as well. Yeah. Okay. Natural you, twenty. What if I said you Ooh. could? I would need to have twenty feet movement to hit it. Oh, you have to do a ram attack. I need a charge because okay. there's a ram, and then the charge adds okay. on to it. Well, I appreciate your honesty, then, Justin. Um, but a natural twenty. Okay. Natural twenty. Double all dice. And would you care to roll on my new... Would Do you want to go for double dice or do you want to roll on the new uh, crit chart? Crit chart? Let's bust out the crit chart. Let's bust out <laughs> the crit chart. Let. Roll me a D100. Had a lot of D100 fun today. There Honestly. A lot of D100 fun. So yeah, I, I like that new house roll. You can either go for the double dice or you can choose to roll on my randomized uh, crit chart, which can be very fun. 12. <laughs> a 12. So between... 10 and 15 yes all right regular damage and you have knocked off one of its flailing arms and it goes flying whoa so basically the antler caught it as it came down antler was stronger than arm arm went flying helicopter style off well regular damage it has lost one of its weapons it can only make one attack per round I say the arm's still flying to this day <laughs> that's eight eight that. damage <laughs> eight bludgeoning wait eight. 12 bludgeoning 
12 bludgeoning. Well done. Excellent. You take some of my antler, I take some of your arm. Tip for that. Rue followed immediately by Amy. And Sick. I will actually get space after that uh, with my mobile feet. I'm going to go back 20 feet. All right. Gonna you got some trees shoot him with an arrow. Luru, you have to move just a smidge to get back in a... Yeah, I'm going inside. forward. That is an... That is a 12 plus. What's my modifier on my bow? Eight! So That's a 20 to hit. Sure. A 20 will hit. Oh, thank God. So just barely... Okay. With my short bow, I get... You have a you have a friendly within five feet still from Galio. So I get sneak attack. So it's one d six plus five, and this is my magic bow, which gives me an extra sneak attack die. So that's five sixty six plus five. Ooh. There you go. Is that right? Yes, that is right. Okay, nine. So every time you hit twelve. You get 46, it's five d six for the bow. And your weapon should be one. So, wow, that is a lot of math. 17 plus 5. 22. 66 plus 5. They rolled 66 plus 5? 22. Okay, but that, that's what we rolled, right? 66 plus 5. Yeah, because it's my regular d6 and then my 4 Ooh. sneak attack damage and then. You're familiar with uh, the big golems from Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker, the ones with like little holes in the middle. When when Link shoots them with the arrows, they like and explode. It's kind of like that, but it turns to you with its eye hole, only to find your. Uh, it, it's a short bow, correct? Your short bow arrow flying directly into its eye hole. <laughs> As it does so, you see it ping, and distinctively, you note it look up at the sky as if it were blinded completely, which is hard to imagine on a contract of some sort, but it's hands going crazy and its last arm is just flailing in circles. I did this and like came out of cover. I want there to be a large mushroom that I could have slid across Dukes of Hazard style. <laughs> For no reason other than I want to do that. I love it. Fair enough. There's, in <laughs> fact, a toadstool about butt height, which you can, if you get some momentum, slide across. For it's at least, cost. like, four feet wide? Yeah, mm. sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amy Proto. Uh, nothing's left, right? The golem is still up, and it's basically got a one giant arm flailing and flinging, and it's blind, so it could hit anything. All right. Uh, well then, even though he's been torn asunder by wolves, I feel compelled right. And another one of my inventions! <laughs> oh my god. Pull out my arcane firearm, use a second level spell, and fire off three bolts of fire, one of them extra big. Let him have him, Amy. <laughs> Get him, girl. Uh, that's a 23 for a hit, a it's... 20, which is a hit, it's... and a... 16 and 7 is you, another guess. Yeah, so they all hit. You're not I was you're not even going to need the third, but go ahead and roll all the damage here. Do all the damage. All right. First one's 11. Okay. Nice. Then uh, 7. And then another 10. How do you want to do this? Uh, because these things are shoddy and cheap, the first one blows the good arm off at the elbow. Okay. Ooh. Then I, then I melt half the head in, and then the last one takes a knee off, and it crumples to the ground and stops moving. Oh my golly! You were shooting the dead guy. <laughs> the dust. No. <laughs> the dust from the felled golem settles. You look up, the sky is still beautiful and cheery. Sylvan, at this exact moment, Ishtash clips his pincers in victory. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, Ishtash. All hail. This is but a taste of our future victory. 
Behind you, a small crowd has gathered of roughly 29 yordles. There's one dead. That you guys already heard about. He's hanging. I haven't told anybody about it yet. Yeah. Roughly 29 yordles begin to slow clap and cheer. It turns into a whole bit. Everyone slow clapping. There's crying. There's tears. There's hugging and high fiving and just shouting about all these jeers and cheers for you. And the one in the cloak removes her cloak, flips up her eye patch, and asks, "Heroes, what do they call you?" The rule. I'll let you have this one. Tell him. The motherfucking bugaboo! <laughs> the motherfucking bugaboos! They all go crazy. They're extra crafts. As this is happening, the cheers are going off. You can see that a bugaboo flag is raised above where the old flag stood above his workshop. Damn, they work fast. <laughs> Very fast. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, all right. This adventure was canny. You guys all got all the stuff that you got. Um, Amy hit me up first. He had stuff for you that's on it, but I got to get to bed soon, so I'll hit you up next in between games about what kind of stuff you found in his workshop. The workshop is yours. The island is theirs, but you're welcome to at any time. Essentially, you guys are like the heroes of what is now known as Bugaboo Island. <laughs> no way. Yeah, named in your own. Bugaboo Island. Yep. The important part before you go to bed is, uh, am I able to find his bunker and disarm his, Thinking his, too. his bombs so this place doesn't accidentally explode? Yes, he was the a true narcissist wires. and wrote down all of his uh, stuff in like a big diary, like, assuming that it would one day be told as like a heroic story of the master person. So everything nerd. is in there in great detail. Nerd. Yeah, big nerd. All right, I would just <laughs> like to uh, point out to the party that my plan was to walk him to the ship, grab him and jump off and let him drown because I don't have to breathe. I, what, the, what the hell did you guys do to start the fight with the golems? No idea. Oh, Galio was snooping around like usual. You know how it goes. I was doing some sneaky sneaky stuff. I'm not very sneaky. And uh, something hit the door and put me on my backside. Well, you know what they say about the bugaboos. It's always the hard way with us. <laughs> We're a bunch of kindergartners. We get the job done. We do. That we do. Getting the job done by any means. Bugaboos. Yark. 2021. Anyways, hope you guys like this uh, quick little one-off one-shot. I didn't honestly want to start the next chapter without Gus. I felt it was more appropriate to... Especially when I'm starting a <laughs> chapter half based on his lore and half based on Amy's. It felt weird to start without him. So I wrote this little adventure. Um, a lot of you guys, my name Justin, were here when I said, fuck it, I'll write a one-shot really quick. Uh, the only notes I actually wrote for this one-shot ahead of time, it says, I first, it, okay, this is li literally all of the notes I wrote for this game, and you guys were there when I started it. It says, Isle of the Misfit Toys, ship, tape, ship takes damage, must run at nearest landmass, Hextech friendly, Hextech Machinist, the AT McBoyle, one Yordle has sentience. And that was it. That was all I actually wrote. The rest of it was completely off the fucking cuff. So! <laughs> You're telling me you didn't plan out all those mushroom houses? Not even a little <laughs> bit, as you can tell by how long it took me to make little mushroom houses. <laughs> I knew that it wasn't planned because of one big mistake. When you had Eye Patch Girl wink, you didn't have her pull up her eye patch to wink with that eye. I wished mm. I would have done it after I said it. Um, it was terrible. Zero out of ten. I, I hated this. <laughs> <laughs> Trash um, session. Trash session. So that, that little yordle was actually based off of the anime character Megamine from... Um, what's that What's that anime, Dad? What's the anime that Megamine's in? She's, oh, I just... The little, um, the little fireball wizard. She wears an eye patch just because it looks cool. Oh, that's... Uh, that's Konosuba. Uh, Konosuba. Konosuba, yeah. Yeah. It's her, but a yordle that smokes. Uh, I, I didn't have a whole lot of time to get around her to her only knowing one spell and it being fireball all the time um, and only once per day and it just gets a little bit bigger every day but I do hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of the uh, offshoot sort of fun adventure uh, for everybody watching at home thank you for sticking with us we love to have you uh, everybody go ahead and clap for Danny for making that fucking sick ass picture again
I think that's actually the, the star Yay. of the night here. Uh, big props to each of you. I'm actually so glad that you all chose to split up so we could have a bunch of different stuff going on here in, in the uh, Isle of the Misfit Yordles, as it were. Uh, we'll get into a little bit later what kind of benefits you got off of the basically you guys are like the the champion of these 30 euros they're gonna stay on the island they're gonna rebuild their society in a way that they deem fit and little mega mean yordle is gonna become like i don't know the treasurer <laughs> or something can I, on our like off time not on can i just uh like show her how to like you know Gather crowd, rally people, make some signs with my little anarchy skills. Yeah. Teach her how means. to campaign. Whatever. Don't Give her worry. my megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> the list goes on. But I was also able to introduce some other stuff. Sylvan, you will notice when you turn back into your elven form that there is a scar on your forehead now from where that chip of your antler came off. What? Hey. What does it look like? It's like cool. a scar, like you got cut or something. Oh man! Add it to the drawing. <laughs> I didn't know that's how that worked. Cool. Me neither. I just think I just thought that would be a cool thing. Sweet. Yeah. The time that your antler got chunked and it ended up becoming a permanent scar it could be a fun story to tell at a bar. I don't know. Sweet. <laughs> Anyways, that's all, folks. I've got work in six hours so i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> i love you guys and i'll see you all later all right all right bye if bye watching at home i love you guys too and i'll see you guys all later as well saturday for how it's your campaign monday nights every night for lolx dnd we'll see you guys all later bye Salute. <laughs>